Hello, hello, everybody. Good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Please let me know in the comment section uh, where you guys are tuned in from. And uh, please remember to like the stream, whether you're watching on Rumble, Odyssey, Rockfin, or YouTube. So I've got a couple of... Um, <laughs> A couple, we've got a ton of segments to go through here. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, there, there's, I think we'll start with the breaking um, story with the British government, because that, that is um, something. That <laughs> someone says they're tuning in from Sunakistan. <laughs> well, I, it, it's got a lot to do with Sunak, you'll see in a moment. Um, we've got people tuning in from Ireland, from Mexico. Uh, from Pakistan, from Trinidad and Tobago, from London, from Tunisia, from California, Chicago, North California, or um, uh, Brazil, Canada, New York, Australia. Someone is tuning in from the Milky Way. Excellent. Um, Southern Hemisphere, even better. <laughs> um, Hungary, Southampton, Malaysia, New Jersey. Uh, from Brazil, from Morocco, Minnesota, Denmark, Texas, uh, Ireland, and on and on and on and on. We've got a super, a super chat that was sent to me instantly by Gold Alchemist, who, who said, More Qassam Gold confirmed uh, 1, 60 injured. I'll show you the clip in a second, and thank you very much, Gold Alchemist. And thank you also to... Um, uh, this, this is from... Yoji, okay, I'm not going to bother reading the, 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 the name, but it says, Richie Habibi, much love from Chicago. Stay spreading the truth. Uh, you're a hero, my brother. I wish there was something more I can do. As a Palestinian Christian, I am in this weird spot. Gucci, well, thank you very much, Gucci. You know, I'm, I'm about to show, um, obviously, because it's Easter, you know, I wanted to, to um, uh, talk a bit about, about um, just like with Christmas, you know, how they're kind of trying to weaponize christianity to push israel to, to push israel and there's a great there, i'm going to show you some great clips from a palestinian um uh priest who who is really wonderful you might remember him from from when it was christmas time uh, his videos were going viral i showed showed a few as well so we'll, we'll get to him in a, in a bit and um and uh thank you so much again for the for the support and it's good to see you it's good to have you so Thank you very much for your kind words. Let, let, let's start with this one. This is from France, okay? I want to start with this one. So, give me just a second to pull it up. Okay. So, the French government have announced that they will begin pursuing legal action and prosecuting French Israelis who uh, return from Gaza having committed war crimes. And of course, they've, you know, they've taken, uh, you know, it's about time. They've taken uh, their sweet time for sure. And I think it's more of a, just a blah, blah statement than, than any concrete action. But I want to just show you a little bit of, of, of you know, this, this um, uh, of what, what's been said in France and who's been uh, pushing for this, because it's essentially the left. You've you've got, um, you know, the the unbowed party, the uh, France Insoumise with Jean Luc Mélenchon, um, and uh, Thomas Porte. They they're really the only two who've been pushing for this. Macron has been doing nothing. The all the ministers have been doing nothing. So you know, th it's a victory, but it's a small one nevertheless. And I and I'll show you this um, here. So there's essentially a WhatsApp group for French Jews. And uh, this uh, Palestinian journalist, I've, I've, who's very good, Eunice, he basically infiltrated the group. I suppose he pretended to be an Israeli or something, I don't know, but um, it's, it's in this group that he found a, uh, a video shared by one of the members where this person was, was literally filming, you know, a Palestinian, blindfolded, being thrown around by, by a bunch of Israelis. And he literally, the guy filming literally says in French, here, I'll, I'll translate it for you. Look, I'm not going to show you because I can't, but I'll, I'll play you. We can listen to the audio, all right? Okay. 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 
T'as vu ces enculés, mon neveu Ces fils de putain Ok, il est juste cassant, il n'y a pas besoin de moi. Les gars Allez, descends, fils de pute. Il dit « Come down, you son of a bitch ». Sur les pierres. Ah, enculé de ta mère. T'as vu ces petits fils de putain là Regardez, c'est pissé dessus. Look at him, he's pissed himself. Regarde, tu vas montrer son dos, tu vas rigoler. Regarde. Show his back, show his back. Ils l'ont torturé. He's been, we we tortured him, or he he said he doesn't make. It's not clear whether he says we tortured him or they tortured him, but he's he's part of the group, obviously. It's his unit. So this is one example. This is one example. Then as soon as um, this came out, it was sent to the French Foreign Ministry, and, uh, you know, um, I'll read this to you here. So the video first appeared in a WhatsApp group for French Jews, um, and uh, the soldiers' identity is just known as, as S, right? Uh, and following... Um, These, well, they're not accusations, are they? This is a bloody video, but anyway. Uh, Thomas Porté of the left-wing France Unbowed Party, led by Jean-Luc Mélenchon. They both alerted the Paris Public Prosecutor's Office, then the National Anti-Terrorist Prosecutor's Office, and presented the video as proof of complicity in war crimes and acts of torture by French-Israeli dual nationals. In response, the French Foreign Ministry held a press conference last week during which it issued a statement reaffirming France's jurisdiction to investigate uh, and prosecute French citizens for offenses committed overseas. Okay, so this is from, a, from the deputy spokesperson who was quoted by Haaretz, the Israeli paper. He said, I would like to provide clarification on the subject of French-Israeli soldiers engaged in the Israeli army. And on the subject, I would particularly like to recall that French justice has jurisdiction over crimes committed by French nationals abroad, including in the context of the ongoing conflict. This is what the French justice minister said. The, the involvement of French nationals in these atrocities tarnishes France's image. <laughs> well, it's, it, that, that's a bit of an understatement, isn't it? And then they say in the article that around 4,185 Israeli soldiers hold French nationality. Uh, and that's, they're, they're quoting um, the French paper Liberation. So... You know, I, I think the number is higher than that. I think that's just the number that we know about. And I, you know, just by virtue of them being present there, once again, we go back to the Nuremberg trials. The logic was, it, does, it doesn't matter if you yourself went and, and committed crimes against humanity. You participated in the regime. You know, you work in the, in the post office handling Nazi mail. Well, guess what? You know, you know you're part of the machine. You're liable for prosecution. You're the mayor. You're not Hermann Goering, but you're the mayor of some, some German town. Well, yeah, too bad. You participated in the, in the, in the genocide and the, and the crimes against humanity. Remember, these are separate crimes, actually. Genocide, ethnic cleansing, crimes against humanity. But the, the, the concept of crimes against humanity, they came up with this in Nuremberg. And, I mean, the, the fact that you have 4,000 soldiers, you don't need to prosecute... Uh, one of them and then let the rest of them go. They're all, they're all guilty if they are in Gaza. And once again, even if they're not in Gaza, what if they're in Lebanon, for example? What if they're in Syria? Are the Israelis not committing war crimes and crimes against humanity there? Of course, they've been doing it for decades. So, you know, this is like the tip of the iceberg. This is nothing. This is nothing. Um, you know, the, the, the sanctions and, and the measures that they've taken against Russians, for example, Or anyone who, who they don't like, who comes from, you know, the axis of evil. They would jump to issue sanctions and arrest warrants. And, and, and I'm not even talking about the ICC. I'm talking about just the French public prosecutor's office. They would jump, right? They wouldn't hesitate. Like the, the same day, they will, they'll issue a million different, um, you know, sanctions regimes and, and uh, you know, steal people's yachts or something over, over the tiniest bull, you know, bull crap. And, and when it comes to this, it's like, yeah, you know, you, you're, watch out, you're liable to prosecution. I mean, d there's video evidence. It's not like someone is speculating. The, the people are uploading this themselves because they're so, shame they're so shameless, the Israelis. They literally have no shame. That's how scandalous they are. Let me show you another one here. 
Let me show you this. This was by the, the same French lawmaker. And he, he posted a, a, um, a uh, photo here, right? He's saying this is a, a French-Israeli lawyer blocking humanitarian aid that's supposed to go into Gaza. See this? That's her. What's her name? Nili Kupfer Nauri. And she says, I, 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 that's what she says. Pour empêcher les camions inhumanitaires de passer, ravitailler le Hamas. She's basically saying the inhuman. <laughs> she's, she's playing on, on, the, you know, on, on the word humanitarian, saying it's inhumane aid uh, that will be sent to Hamas. And she's literally posting this herself. And she's supposed to be a lawyer. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to say, you know? I don't know what to say. It's, they're just scum. Israelis are really scum. That's what I want to say, actually. That's, that's what needs to be said. Uh, so, you know, you've got multiple levels of crime. What, some of them is direct torture, or being complicit in a unit's torture. Or, for, for example, here, when you're blocking humanitarian aid, I mean, th this, is, this is obviously liable for prosecution in any jurisdiction, right? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, you know, it, this goes to show you that it's so different with the Israelis, whether we're talking about American uh, colonizers or French. They, they all possess these, these disgusting traits that come with colonialism, you know, with settler colonialism. And I, ju I just found this video by chance, actually. This is just, um, it has French subtitles, but I mean, you, you, this is a man in Gaza, and I'll, and I'll, Tell you what, what's, what, what he's saying. He says, <laughs> So he says, My knees have been destroyed. They broke my knees. Um, you know, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Oh, sorry. He's saying, I couldn't believe that I was still able to see. Right? <laughs> they hit me on this eye. They messed it up. Every two or three days, ten soldiers would come in with these with these dogs, and they make the dogs pee on us, urinate on us. They'd have the dogs go up on our backs. Basically, you know, uh, uh, telling them to say degrading things. That you know the dogs basically that that they are. Lower than the dogs. They wanted the Palestinians to say this while the dogs are actually on their backs. You know, to, to have the dog go up and say, I am lower than a dog. That's what the Israeli soldiers made the Palestinian prisoners do. You know, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Twenty-four hours a day sat on our knees. We we didn't we couldn't even you know, fold our legs uh, uh, or, or raise our heads. You've got, um, well, he's saying we, we were a bunch of 80, 70 year old men. Some of us diabetes, cancer, heart uh, problems. And when they would change uh, shift, if someone fell asleep, they'd string them up. Well, you you remember this. This is this is already old, but it's new to me. I haven't seen this video, for example, and I found it while I was searching for, uh, while I was collating things for for this uh, segment. Just you know, it, it, it's it's like a it's like a drop in the ocean. I mean, it, I could sit here twenty four hours a day, and I would still find new things every second because there's so much of it. Really, really quite spectacular in, in, in the, you know, obviously the most negative sense because the usually armies that do this kind of stuff, they, they try their best to hide it, right? The Israelis, it's the opposite. They, they want to show it because they're so depraved. Well, if you had any doubts um, about French Israelis, uh, <laughs> I think we put those to... Um, to bed and, and, and to rest and you know the French government are just like the British government and the, the American government they don't do anything they don't do anything they don't care they, they know they're committing war crimes they know they know they're complicit by doing by, by doing nothing
Let me show you something else. So, okay, I don't, I don't know how I'm gonna do, quite do this, but uh, we'll, we'll try and go through it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I cannot show you the video. I'm, I'm unable to show you the video, but I wanted to discuss this incident uh, of the Israelis. They, what they did is basically, and it's captured on camera, this is released exclusively by Al Jazeera. There are two Palestinian men walking on the beach in Gaza, and the Israelis, they just, they kill them for, for no reason. And then they scoop them up with a bulldozer and just like, you know, threw them in the sand like they're trash or something. I mean, it's, it's difficult to, to, you know, put it on a scale. But it's definitely one of the most dehumanizing things I've, I've seen, especially from, from this war, which is, which is really saying a lot. And then the same thing happens again, like, like two days later. It's like the Israelis, they, they, they want to, to provoke people or, or upset them even more. They're like, oh, so this upset you? Okay, here's another incident of the same thing happening. And it's, like, it's going to be five men this time instead of two. And so there's a video, but again, we were just saying that the Israelis are so shameless, they, they don't even have a conscience to, to you know, they, they just do it because they're, they're colonizers. There's another video, as I said, that came out. I, I didn't count how many people it is. I think it's five, and I'm not going to show it to you, but you can hear um, this Israeli soldier, a woman, just casually singing as she's filming this bulldozer scoop up five lifeless bodies and you know toss them like they're nothing it's really something it's 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 uh i saw i saw someone post i think it was in french and they said you know what kind of mental disease is this can a doctor please answer these are this is what she's saying here's the translation and you can listen to the audio <laughs> Well, you get the idea. I mean, if this if if this were a human being, you you would you know be put in a in a in a nut house in an asylum by by now. You would you would have been institutionalized. And the Israelis don't even bother hiding this. So I w I went on J Post, Jerusalem Post, and they just casually say this. Yeah, the the IDF admits to killing two Gazans and burying them with a bulldozer. Wow. So the IDF admitted to killing two Palestinian men and burying their bodies with a bulldozer after Al Jazeera published a video claiming to show the incident. The IDF claimed that the men approached the operational area in central Ghana, Gaza in a suspicious manner and didn't respond to warning shots. That, that's an absolute lie because you can't, they're not wearing anything. Underneath, underneath they say that, um, uh, yeah, that they, they thought they had explosives on them or something once again the, the, they're not wearing anything there's no bags or, or or whatever and it's a lie that they fired shots at them because they didn't react you can see these two men they're waving white flags and they they didn't react they were just killed if you fire a warning shot someone will get down they'll crouch they'll try to hide they, they'll put their hands up you know there's some kind of body language response there was none whatsoever and i know because I, I i saw the stuff so Besides, I mean, even, even if that were true, why do, why do they always uh, kill people? They, they, you know, they, they say that they act as if they have to do this. The distance between them is, is I mean, like 10, 20 meters. There's nothing. So, you know, 
Not in the knee or the foot. No, let's kill him. It, this is Israeli brutality. They're just liars. They're murderers and liars, and they're sh absolutely shameless. And then the fact that they dump them with a bulldozer, they say that, oh, they were afraid they, they had hidden explosives. You know what's so funny? This is an Israeli technique. Every time the Israelis say something, it's actually something they do. There's a case where the Israelis killed two British soldiers, and they strung them uh, from a tree or something, and, and the point is they, they hang their bodies and stuff them with explosives, like, you know, like a booby trap. So... First thing I, I thought of when I, when I saw that is, wait, the, the Israelis did that. The Zionists did that to two British soldiers. I remember this very famous case. So, I mean, it's not just one case, by the way. It's just one incident when they were killing uh, Arabs and British soldiers and, and, and so on, when they were trying to take over Palestine in, in 46, 47, 48, and before that. So the, the other tell that this is a lie is that if you do watch the video, there's... A bunch of Israeli soldiers walking next to the bulldozer just casually. When, when you're afraid of explosives, you, you get a bomb defusal squad. You don't just walk next to it like two meters away casually without even looking at it. I mean, this is you, you're so obvious from the body language that every claim they make is a lie. In any case, I, I just thought I'd tell you about this because of how depraved it is. Um, and, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand with what we saw last week where the Israelis are killing four Palestinian men and, uh, you know, drone striking them again for no reason. I mean, everybody in Gaza it ha has been, you know, killed in their living room. They, even when they were evacuating, when they forced people out of their homes, that you're literally complying with their ethnic cleansing and they still kill you on Salah al-Din Road. It's incredible. It's really incredible how depraved they are. Okay, so I'm going to show you something from, uh, from, let, let's look at the story from the, from the British government, the leaked audio. So this, this just happened now, all right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So we have confirmation now, in case it wasn't obvious. The British government know that Israel are breaking and violating international law, and they don't care. As a matter of fact, they're doing everything to keep it hush. And now there's a leaked recording. Just listen to them. Please just listen to them in their own words, okay? Um, so I, I'll be very clear. The idea that Lord Cameron is being pro Arabic is the absolute birds. Uh, he is fighting very hard. So, first of all, two state solution does not help Hamas. That hurts Hamas in every single way. That helps, that destroys all the narratives and the reason they exist. Two state solution does not help them. Secondly, the Foreign Office has received official legal advice that Israel has broken international humanitarian law, but the government has not announced it. They have not said it. They haven't stopped arms export. They've done a few very small sanctions on Israeli settlers, and everyone internationally has agreed that settlers are illegal, that they shouldn't be doing what they're doing, is the way mm -hmm. they have continued the money to put in. The position that David is taking, which happens to be the same position as me, but I'm still very tough on him, is that Israel has an absolute right to self-defense. And I have sat in bunkers and worked with Israeli soldiers and been very proud to do so, and I would do it again tomorrow. But the right to self-defense... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So she's, she's proud of... She's proud of it. She would do it again tomorrow. Anyway, I'll let her continue. Right to self defense, and I have sat in bunkers and worked with Israeli soldiers and been very proud to do so, and I would do it again tomorrow. But the right to self defense has a limit in law, it is not limitless. And unfortunately, some of the ways in which Israel is prosecuting this is making their long term security less certain, mm -hmm. it is making our long term security less certain. I'm amazed that our national threat level has not gone up. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And it breaks my heart because I know it could be done differently. So the problem yeah. is we need a long-term security for Israel. That does not happen without a Palestinian state. And that is how we yeah. ultimately undermine hands. You cannot, I said... Honestly, hold on. I'm going to have to stop her, right? Because she, she, she's, correct. She's, she's right here. She says, I'm amazed that our national threat level has not gone up. Yeah, me too. And that goes to show you 
that Hamas do not care about carrying out attacks against the UK. Hezbollah do not care about carrying attacks against the UK. But if you go to their land, if you go to Palestine, as the Israelis have done, and you try to steal their land, they will defend themselves. You want to talk about self-defense, right? They will defend themselves. Not in the way you mean it. Not genocide, but actual self-defense. You know, you're not going to just steal people's countries and get away with it. She is, so, you know, she, she is correct. And she should, be, she should be grateful because somebody else, another country, would have attacked the UK for UK support of Israel. But Hamas are not interested in that. Hezbollah are not interested in that. The Israelis are the only ones out of these three groups. The Israelis are the only ones who have put bombs in London, who have attacked British citizens, murdered, assassinated British officials, British soldiers, British police. The only ones. Let's just be clear about that, okay? Certain. Mm -hmm. It is making our long-term security less certain. I'm amazed that our national threat level has not gone up. <coughs> and it breaks my heart because I know it could be done differently. So the problem yeah. is we need a long-term... Oh, it breaks her heart. It breaks her heart, but she supports Israel, right? She supports Israel, but it breaks her heart. She really cares. <laughs> security for Israel. That, that's the only thing she cares about. Long-term security for Israel. That, that's her only real concern. She doesn't care about, oh, actually, uh, I'm complicit in genocide. No, no, no. It's the, we, we, the Zionists. We have to give them long-term security. Bow down, everyone, before your Zionist masters. I mean, the groveling, the groveling is really something else. The problem yeah. is we need a long-term security for Israel. That does not happen without a Palestinian state, and that is how it okay. ultimately undermines my hands. You cannot, and I spent two and a half years of my life fighting like Oh yeah, she's fought ISIS. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't Iran and, and Syria and Russia and Hezbollah that killed and crushed ISIS. It was her. It was Alicia Keynes. <laughs> what a joke. No, but she, she's, she's really funny. It's like the, the only reason she cares about, she pretends to care about having a Palestinian state is to undermine Hamas. Well, look, Hamas exists because uh, no one would oblige, by, you know, abide by the uh, Oslo Accords. And Hamas, I mean, looking at the Palestinian people, had to oblige them. What, what else could they do? They want, you want to just leave Palestinians in this situation? No. 75 years is more than enough. I'm sorry. You know, they, this, is, uh, uh, this, is, this is absolutely ridiculous and so cynical. It, these people don't actually care about it. It's like, oh, well, today, you know, we'll support a Palestinian state uh, because we don't like Hamas. And then in the future, or actually, I'm, I'm saying in the future, but it really was like this in the past where they, they wanted Hamas because Hamas would fracture the, the Palestinian political scene. And, and then that backfired on them because, yeah, it turns out that they're serious about it. I mean, these people are really, really just full of manipulation. They're, they're, they're full of cunning ideas. And, and just thinking of how to nec you know, get the next big paycheck. That's all it's about. Security for Israel. That does not happen without a Palestinian state. And that is how it okay. ultimately under my hands. You cannot, and I spent two and a half years of my life fighting ISIS. You cannot destroy an ideology. You cannot form it into obliteration. So we need that long-term solution. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not even going to to get into this nonsense with like what, what is she comparing ISIS ISIS is a western creation don't 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 come here please stop let's let's stick to the to the to the main issue this is the same keep, keep in mind this is the same person Alyssa Keynes who is who is grilling Cameron about a month and a half ago I'll sh yeah it was in January so about about 2 months ago I'll show you the clip we covered this. Philip, under international obligations, do occupying powers have an obligation to provide access to water, yes or no? You, you asked me a technical Sir Philip, question. Sir Philip, I, I'm really, forgive me, you and I have played this dance enough times. We all know that under international law, there is an obligation for occupying powers to provide water. You asked me a technical question about occupying powers uh, and what their obligations are in international law. I imagine you're correct, Chair, but I'm... So not a, uh, not a lie. I also just would point out. I Philip, don't just, just bear in mind, we want to have. Uh, we've come to such a good place working with you, because we have the confidence that you do know these details, and that's what your colleagues say. You know. That
you get you understand it's the same song and dance and then and then david cameron says yeah i'm also not a lawyer i don't have the paper in front of me it's it's an act it's an act because w when they're behind closed doors this is this is the way they speak right this is the way they speak right to self-defense have a limit in law it is not limitless and unfortunately some of it's about this Israel's long-term security. That's what they care about. Um, and you know what's funny is that there, there's um, there's a letter that that the MPs in England signed, and it was a letter telling the government to stop selling weapons to to the Israelis. Now, bear in mind, there are not a lot of. If you look at the total percentage, it doesn't compare a lot to what the Americans and, and Germans are giving the Israelis, but it, it's, it's not about percentages here. The principle is wrong, and you know, uh, even 1% is still too much. So the, the thing here is that you only have about 130 of them who signed it, uh, and they sent this to Cameron, and this is very bizarre, because for some reason, no one told George Galloway about it, and they didn't get his signature, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I understood. And I find that scandalous. I mean, like, who, who are... Look, fine, the, the letter is a great idea, uh, but you're six months too late. Actually, you're, you're, you know, decades too late, to be frank. And on top of that, G George Galloway has been doing this since before half of these people were even in Parliament. So, I mean, and he's way more anti-war and anti-Zionist than they are and pro-Palestinian than they are. They, they, you know, there's no comparison. How dare they leave him out of this letter? Who do these people think they are? I know why they did it. I, I know why they did it. Now, un unless this really was, really was, in some, you know, tiny off chance, an accident, I think the real reason is that they're, 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 they feel threatened by the Workers' Party actually winning the first candidate, you know, and the leader, George Galloway, winning for the seventh time, um, uh, you know, in, in the fourth constituency, but for the first time as the Workers' Party of Britain, being inaugurated into Parliament with George Galloway. It makes people in Labour feel uncomfortable because they know that with the Workers' Party, they're irrelevant. They only have Labour in the name. But, you know, the Workers' Party is actually about workers. They're actually anti-NATO. They're anti-Zionist. They care about British people. Labour Party are like the Tories. They work together. It's a one-party system like the Democrats and the Republicans. So when you have a third party, so to speak, it's not the only a third party, but just, you know, uh, um, you have a third party, a new party entering the scene, and it's George Galloway. I think they felt threatened and they left him out on purpose. And, that, and that's scandalous. Truly scandalous. But the real scandal is Israel, without question. The real scandal is Israel. And, you know, th this, this letter is, is, what is it going to accomplish? There are way more efficient ways to accomplish things uh, in British politics. And sending a letter to someone called David Cameron, who, you know, we know what he did as prime minister. We know who he is now. <laughs> He's a criminal. He's a criminal. This is not how you go about it. And you don't leave George Galloway out by accident or on purpose. And... The fact that this audio has just leaked is, uh, I, can, I can tell you one thing. There are a lot of people in the establishment, in the media, and in politics who have similar recordings, probably worse ones than this, probably more revealing ones, that they could have leaked previously. But because the journalists in England have no interest in actually challenging government policy on Israel because they themselves support Israel, we're never going to hear those recordings. We're never going to learn of these scandals. And so this is, you know, this is a fluke, in my opinion, this leaked recording. But without, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, they can't come afterwards and say, well, we didn't know. No, you absolutely know. <laughs> I mean, again, this is, this is like trying to prove, you know, trying to, to, uh, to, to prove that one plus one equals two. We know it equals two, but... They, they, they keep pretending it's three. And they know since the beginning that Israel is wrong. They know this. That, wh why, do they, why do you think they have to try so hard to protect Israel? It's because they know Israel's wrong. But this really nails them. 
and they can never come afterwards and say we didn't know. We had no idea. No, you know. All of you. All of you. And her interest, you know, is just to protect the party, just to protect Israel. That's all she cares about. It's not about doing the right thing. No, no, no. She puts on an act during the, the grilling, during the questions, and then behind closed doors, this is how they behave. One of you is saying Cameron is not an elected MP. Yes, which, which is even more scandalous, because if you're in the cabinet, if you're a cabinet minister, for example, as, as Cameron is a uh, foreign secretary, you have to be an elected MP. You, you know, and, and he trots around now with his title, saying, oh, I'm a lord. <laughs> He's a lord of criminals, is what he is. Thank you for the donations. We've got, we've got some more here on... Um, on Rumble, this is from uh, Jonathan, who says, Richard, you should have Caleb Maupin on your show to talk about his book, Who Are the Houthis? What Are They Fighting For? I, I absolutely should. Thank you. And, and um, there's also another one here. I'm about to get to the Houthis, by the way. There's another one here from Bobby who says, and I want to be clear, I support, um, and I want to be clear, I support and love Jewish people, but Zionism is terrorism. Jews are the first victims of Zionism. Yeah, I mean... Many of the people the Zionists killed in Palestine were actually Jews who didn't like Zionism. So, you know, it, they, they, you know how they treat them and call them is really no different. And uh, um, thank you very much, Bobby, for the, for the donations. And um, I, I will uh, check out Chris's book. And, you know, I was listening to one of the Palestinian resistance fighters, uh, a legend, and he... Because uh, you were talking about Israel in 9-11. Well, I'll just, I'll just tell you that he implicated the Israelis in Kennedy. And I know that's not, you know, that controversial of a thing. Because at, at the time, Dimona, which is the nuclear facility the Israelis have, um, you know, they, they, uh, the Americans were not too happy about the Israelis developing nuclear weapons. Obviously, the Israelis uh, managed to do it in the end. And, uh, you know, they jailed that guy who... who uh, Mordechai, I think his name was, or I, unless I'm I'm mispronouncing or or, or uh, misspeaking his name, but he was, you know, they jailed him for like 30 years because he revealed that they have a nuclear weapons program, and then I th I think he's he's trapped now. He can't even travel or do anything. They you know they watch him 24 seven. So again, just just as a reminder before I continue, thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel and sending these donations because. I tell the truth about Israel, and that's why they demonetized the channel. They made it so that I can't earn any money, and so that the videos, the knowledge, uh, is is you know doesn't spread. That people don't see the videos recommended. They they don't they can't even click on them because they don't see them. And they basically, uh, what they do is they throttle the videos so they make sure that people uh, can't access the knowledge and they're stuck brainwashed with mainstream media. So in any case, thank you to all of you for your donations on PayPal and on Rumble, on Patreon. And if you, if you join, I will play a crab dance. The links are in the description. But for now, let's continue. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what happened in, on, on the ground in Syria. What the Israelis did is they went and bombed Syria, Damascus and Aleppo. And at the same time, mysteriously, there's an attack by Al-Qaeda. Now, keep in mind, Al-Qaeda in Syria was rebranded to uh, Al-Nusra Front, Jabhat al-Nusra, and then to HTS, which is Hayat Tahrir al-Sham. It's, it's Al-Qaeda. It's, it's just rebranded. And mysteriously, they both attack at the same time. And they killed soldiers, and they killed civilians. At the end of the day, the, the death toll was about 40 people. I mean, it's, it's really scandalous. It's truly scandalous. And, and to make things worse, to make things worse, look at the route that the jets took. They passed through Jordan's airspace. Jordan's airspace. Now, you know, need I remind you that Jordan is an Arab country, supposedly. Jordan was supposed to be thawing relations 
with Syria, right? They reopened the border, they had flights out, um, the president and the king had a call together. Everything was supposed to be getting better, but no. The Jordanians, just like the Saudis, just like the UAE, they allow the Israelis to do whatever they like. If, if the Israelis say jump, the Jordanian king asks how high. And he is in the British army, just to remind you that uh, he is fully in the system. Although, again, we're, if you were in the British army and, and you know, an anti-Zionist, fine, but he's not. He is, uh, and his wife is Palestinian. The, the queen is a Palestinian, but she can't really open her mouth, can she? Many Jordanians are actually Palestinian. I'm going to show you in a bit how people are protesting like crazy there. But the fact that this was the route taken and the fact that Al-Qaeda attacked at the same time, you'll see more in my analysis. I've got a big video coming tomorrow, so watch out for that. This was the response from Hezbollah. They fired at the Israelis. In the, here's a video that they put out. It's muted just for the music. What they did, uh, Hezbollah, as they fired at the 91st Israeli Brigade, they achieved multiple hits, and they used the Burkan rockets, the Katyushas, and look at them go. These are Israeli observation posts, electronic warfare, radar surveillance. They have them lined up on the border with Syria and the border with Lebanon. Remember that the Israelis are illegally occupying both Lebanon and Syria. The, the, you, you see, Hezbollah are the only ones who actually, along with, of course, the rest of the resistance, they're the only ones who actually do anything about it. You know, Jordan, instead of blocking or stopping the Israelis, they work with them. They let them use their airspace. An Arab country letting the Israelis use uh, their airspace to attack another Arab country. Do you understand now why they attack Syria so much? Oh, the human rights situation in Syria. Oh, the president is a dictator. Oh, this and that. It's, not, it's nothing to do with that. You think that there's human rights in Egypt and in Saudi Arabia and the UAE and all these allied, so-called allied Israeli countries and American countries? No, it's, it's not better over there. They don't care about human rights. They care about compliance. They want presidents, kings, who do what they're told. And Gaddafi was not one of those people who just, you know, does what he's told. Neither is Assad, neither is Saddam Hussein, or at least he wasn't in, in his later years. So they kill them. They kill them. And they destroy the country. They go after the country. And now you, you can see on the map, I mean, Syria is broken up into to four, five, six goddamn pieces. Who the hell knows at this point? I mean, we, we obviously know that the Israelis are down here. The Turks are up here. The Americans have, you know, one third of the country. You have ISIS in between in, in the desert in Palmyra and up here as well. And, you know, uh, Al-Qaeda. It, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. This is the punishment for, for not doing what you're told. You can see here that... Uh, the Israelis were also busy bombing Lebanon. They killed 16 people, and then Hezbollah fired back and killed a few Israelis as well. The difference is that when Hezbollah are firing, for example, in the video I just showed you here, the, the, this is a military installation. Look at this. These are military, they're illegal military outposts. They are not houses with civilians inside them, right? Whereas the, the Israelis, they kill Lebanese civilians, Syrian civilians, uh, you know, women, men, children, doesn't matter to them. They don't care. They, they do whatever they want. And even before October 7th, they were going in, many of you will remember, they were going in and dropping bombs on Syria almost every week, almost, you know, uh, let's say on a bi-weekly basis. And they would also destroy the airports, right? They, they did this to, to cripple the infrastructure in Damascus, in Aleppo, the same two cities. So what I want to say to you here is that, you, you know, the, the Israelis are not just in Gaza. The focus is on Gaza. But the Israelis have a, have a strangle 
hold on the entire Middle East, on Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, but also on the countries like Jordan and Egypt, who, you know, where, where, where the leaders basically are friends with the Israelis, but the people are not. You, can, you, ask, you ask an Egyptian that you know, or go to Egypt and ask someone in the street what they think of, Egypt, uh, of, of Egypt's ties with Israel or Jordan's ties with Israel, and, and they will say, to hell with them. Ask them, see for yourself what most of them think. So, of course, when we say Israeli, we're also talking about an American grip on the Middle East. It's not a free Middle East, and that's the, uh, the tragedy of it. Let me show you in Jordan what's been happening. This is from just a few hours ago. I've collated a bunch of videos for you. There we go. You guys see this? Okay, perfect. So in Jordan, they have massive protests outside the Israeli embassy. Let me show you a couple of clips from today, from yesterday, from the... It's been going on for days now, literally for days. So Wadi Araba is the treaty uh, that that was signed between the Jordanians and the Israelis, uh, creating this scandalous relationship. Because as you can see, and this is not just an isolated incident, people do not like Israel in, in Jordan. And, and this is the same in Egypt. And as I said, in most Arab countries, they, and they want these so-called peace treaties canceled entirely. So this is outside the Israeli embassy. They've been at this all week. And today, remember, is, is the, the day of land, okay, or land day. So, uh, you know, it has a particular significance and meaning, especially to uh, Jordanians who are Palestinian, and, and this includes many, many Jordanians. You see, when they, when they carried out the Nakba, when the Israelis stole Palestine and they, they ethnically cleansed it in 1948, where, where did people go to? They went next door, to Jordan, to Syria, uh, to Lebanon. Uh, so they were scattered all over the place, and this is what happens during genocide, during ethnic cleansing. The, this is why you have so many Palestinians who you know, uh, all over the world. And the same can be said of Armenians and other people who've suffered uh, genocide. And so there are many, there are many bits in, in this uh, relationship between Jordan and Israel that people want to be completely dissolved and, and uh, disassembled and destroyed. Not only the, the establishment of ties itself, which is already going down the toilet, because if you, <laughs> if you recall in November, Jordan recalled their envoy to Israel for talks, and of course they did nothing after that. But, but not only that, people want the gas deal cancelled. This is back in 2020 already, right? So it's not something that, that is specific to October 7 or to this war. But I'm just trying to give you an idea of how it was and how it's getting even more intense now. This is from two days ago. Jordanians protest against peace treaty with Israel in fresh rallies. And you can see the security forces, right? The gendarmerie. Now, what's, what's, uh, what's interesting is that... Well, I'll get, I'll get to them in a second. Let me just read you these quotes. One, one, protest, uh, one protest cried... Um, protesters also cried, no Zionist embassy on Jordanian land. Yeah, I remember this one. They said... If uh, Hamas is terrorist, then all of Jordan is Hamas. You know, it was basically like, screw you. You, you want to call them terrorists? Whatever. We're, all of us, we are all Hamas. 
They say Amman, which is the um, capital Gaza, one destiny. And you can see here the crowds being uh, funneled in, being brutalized by the gendarmerie, by the police. Because since October 7th, you had people going up to, to the, the fence, basically, and saying, you know what, we don't care. We're, we're, we want to overrun the damn thing. We want to go inside. And to this day, I mean, if, if people could, if, he, if people could actually act freely in Jordan without the security services and the gendarmerie blocking them, they would go to Gaza. They would go to Palestine. Jordan is, doesn't have a border with Gaza, but they would go, they would go into to Palestine and they would fight. Here, there's some more videos. <laughs> These are the largest protests since October 7th, since the initial surge that you had that day. You get the idea. And I want to show you a video here. It's just a split second, but just to give you an idea what, what taste uh, the... Uh, the police give people. It's just as brutal as in the West. There was a clip that I that I had uh, ready to, to show you earlier from Berlin, from Germany. It's no different. I mean, you're treated just like uh, you're in the West. You know, you'll get smacked down and uh, put on the ground and, and brutalized and roughed up because you open your mouth about the Israelis. It's no different than this. You have that same hand, that same fist, beating people in Gaza, beating them in Europe, beating them in, in Jordan and Egypt. And so, once again, when we talk about freedom, what, what is freedom? What is, what is freedom? It's, it's self-determination, right? What's the point of having, you know, so-called peace treaties with Israel, but, but you don't want your government to have a peace treaty with Israel, and they don't respect your wishes, but according... You know, according to the West, you're you're a, a, a blossoming democracy, and you know you you don't you don't get the the harsh treatment like like Syria does, like you know where the the Assad regime is. You you see the the nonsense here because if we look at the Arab countries, if we look at them, S Syria in the, in this region, Syria is the only one that you know the the government actually represent what the people want. It's not a perfect government, but they don't want ties with Israel, and the government respects that. In Egypt, it's screw you, screw your opinion. <laughs> America runs that show. Israel runs that show. And the same can be said of Jordan, unfortunately. This is, this is, the, um, this is the reality, right? It's a, if you want to be left alone, if you want to be, uh, you know, you, you don't want to, to be under the jackboot of the Americans and the Israelis and see your country blown up into a million pieces, you do what you're told and you establish a peace treaty with Israel, or just ties. R remember, I always, I always point to the example of Sudan. During the Trump administration, you had these Abram Accords. The, the two countries that were, weren't actually at the signing, Morocco and Sudan. Now, if you go to Morocco, and you're an Israeli diplomat, good luck finding an apartment. There, there was a piece, we, I showed it to you, that Israeli diplomats had trouble finding a place to stay. As soon as people found out, they were like, screw you. <laughs> Goodbye. Because they, they don't want Israel to have ties with their country. They, they, they boycott and reject this. And eventually, now, you can see how the king sends a few crumbs to Gaza, but he does nothing about, you know, about uh, the, the relationship. There's no threatening to, to um, you know, cut the ties. It's all done in secret. And in Sudan, what did they do? The Americans, they took the Sudanese uh, government off the list 
of state sponsors of terrorism, right? They have these uh, FTO lists and, and, and they have basically a list for foreign terrorist organization and state sponsors of terrorism, it, whatever. It's, it's a terrorism list. So why did they do this? Because Sudan agreed to have ties with Israel. Hold on a second. What's the criteria for being a, a, a terrorist state? It's, it's having ties. You know, it's whether you, you, you do or you don't have ties with Israel. This is the determining factor. I mean, it's ridiculous. But, they, but it's, it's, it shows you, it shows you how hypocritical and, and how nonsensical, you know, these designations of terrorism are in the West. They don't mean anything. It's just do, you, do as we tell you or otherwise. One day, one day, people in Jordan will get what they want. And there will, this, you know, this, this relationship with Israel will come to an end. And the same thing in Egypt and, and all the Arab countries. Because it's unnatural. It's not, it, it's not normal for any country to have ties with something called, uh, you know, like Israel that, that, that calls itself, uh, you know, uh, chosen and thinks it's above everybody else and can behave as it wants. It's not normal. It's not normal. And, and the fact that it was like imposed on people. Remember, man, these borders, e even, even Lebanon and Jordan and every, you know, these borders were chopped up by France and, and the UK barely a hundred years ago. For f since the beginning of time, I, literally, I'm not kidding. Since, you know, the, the birth of civilization in this area, in the Fertile Crescent, in Mesopotamia, it's always been called Syria. But the Israelis think that, you know, they're the ones who are going to come in now and start carving things up. And I, and I wish they even came from the, from the damn place. Because it's just a bunch of Europeans as usual. Just a bunch of Europeans as usual. And each European colonizer develops their own myth. Right? Manifest destiny, the promised land. They, they, they always have myths to justify this behavior. But it's all a pile of crap in the end. Let's look at this lady from the State Department. So this woman who worked at the State Department resigned in protest. Now, I want to read to you. Well, first, I'll play a clip, then I'll read some bits to you. And I, want to, I really want to gauge and, and get your opinion about, uh, about her. So in general, I just find that the way the administration is trying to do this, um, I think they made a political calculation that they thought that it made the most sense politically to maintain this extreme support for Israel, regardless of the, the illegal behaviors that Israel engages in. And I just want to be clear that um, Israel is, is in violation of U.S. laws, whether it's the Leahy laws or um, Section 620I of the Foreign Assistance Act. The law is very clear here. Um, and I, I worry very much that not only at when the administration flouts those laws, it's not only having a devastating effect for the people of Gaza, but for U.S. moral standing abroad. And this administration came in pledging to, to reestablish America's moral leadership, to reengage in international institutions. To, and this was something that many of my colleagues inside state really believed in. Um, and this is part of why so many people uh, are feeling so betrayed by the decisions this administration keeps making. When, when you say it violates U.S. laws, and you mentioned the Leahy uh, law, can you just lay that out in case pe for people who don't know? The Leahy laws um, uh, uh, require that if a, a foreign mili if units of a foreign military are um, if it has been determined that they have engaged in gross violations of human rights, that um, they, those units are no longer eligible to receive um, U.S. military assistance. Um, in addition, the, the other law uh, related to, the, to, foreign assist, to um, humanitarian aid is that if a foreign country is, is blocking American humanitarian aid, they also render themselves ineligible to receive um, U.S. military assistance. So under these laws, as, as you mentioned, plenty of other um, international and, you know, other in international institutions and other countries have 
have made those designations, have said that, that Israel is indeed um, committing these actions, and yet the U.S. government is not yet willing to acknowledge that. Well, I, I have a couple of points, because she, she's... Well, we, we can't fault her for doing the right thing. Okay, I mean, if if we let's let's look at the pros and cons. We can't fault her for doing the right thing because she she's so far, you know, to my knowledge, the only person who's who's actually resigned in protest from one of the key government or uh, you know organs in in the United States. On the other hand, I'm I'm wondering what what was she doing for six months, you know, and even before that. I mean, do do we really need another war in Gaza, another Israeli genocide, uh, or episode of ethnic cleansing? for you not to work at the State Department, you know, and she, she's still buying into the, the U.S. moral leadership of the world. What moral leadership does, if anything in, in, in history was going to convince you that that's a pile of crap, is this not it? You resign, for God's sake. You have to, you know, you tell me. <laughs> Let's, let me look at this, for example, in CNN, okay? So, this, I, I believe she wrote this. Yeah, she, she, she wrote the whole, the whole thing, okay? And she says here, for example, for the past year, I worked for the office devoted to promoting human rights in the Middle East. Now, <laughs> again, when I, when I see that, I, I'm inclined to think, well, um, <laughs> that sounds a bit CIA-ish, don't you, <laughs> don't, you, don't you agree? I mean, again, I could be completely wrong, but, you know, uh, the thing is that when Americans... In the, in the government talk about promoting human rights somewhere. It usually involves the CIA to a certain degree. Anyway, the point is, the point is, I wish people, because she admits that she's only been there for about a year or two, she only had a contract for two years. I wish people in more senior leadership or senior positions in general would also resign because they were telling her, they were kind of dumping their guilt on her and saying, please speak out for us. You fucking speak out. You, why are you still working in this, in this regime? So I don't want to fault her too much. I don't want to fault her too much. I'm just confused. Why, you know, what, what took so long? And, and I said the same thing earlier when we were talking about why the French government only now says it will look into, you know, dual citizens, French Israeli citizens committing war crimes in Gaza. How many months do you need? Like how many videos of war crimes do you need to you act? I mean, it, it's ridiculous, you know, uh, or Bernie Sanders saying, uh, Netanyahu this and Netanyahu that. No, no, that's not what you were saying before. You were saying Israel is the right to defend itself and all this Kool-Aid. So anyway, I, I just wanted to gauge what you guys think of her. Some of you in, in, in the, some of you in the comment section um, said she's telling the truth, courageous. Uh, one of you said here that um, she won't be back on CNN. <laughs> Yeah, somebody else said it's lip service. Somebody else said, good for her, the symbol value of her resignation, the symbolic value of her res resignation means a lot. She is braver than most men. <laughs> yeah. um, another said, for real, six months is a very long time. She said, many in the State Department were against US policy, but were afraid to lose their jobs. Well, yes, definitely. She's brainwashed. Propaganda is a hell of a drug, but she's waking up, so you have to give her credit for that. Yep, I, th I, think, I think we'll end on that note <laughs> for this segment. <laughs> she's waking up, so we have to give her credit for that. Yep. One of you said kudos to her, even if she's a spook. <laughs> okay, so give me a second to pull up the next uh, uh, segment. I, I, We've got some donations here. I have to play some crab dances. This is for, this would be for Blue Ghost, for uh, Khalil, for Sakin. Thank you guys very, very much. And uh, please let me uh, welcome you and thank you for supporting my work with this crab dance. Let's go. Clap for that, you stupid bastard. Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. Boy. Listen, fuckhead. You fucking crossed the line, claiming I'm the enemy. You got that, you goddamn son of a bitch? I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. Good morning. Sunday morning morning. Cut that bitch out. Thank you for Iron Dome. 
والله في كلاب بصراحه يعني ماشي نشتغل عادي وي لايف وي تشيني وي ستيك اون ستور تشاينا 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 تشاينا
Do you, do you see the rubble on the right? The, the cross is planted firmly in the rubble. And he said that they've had that since, since uh, December, right? Since Christmas. He's, he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. And th this needs to be said because these, you know, these Western countries, these Western leaders who say Happy Easter and then they kill Christians in the Holy Land, they're scum. Palestine, greater Syria, this is the Holy Land where Jesus Christ was born. How can these people like Joe Biden and, and, and all of the Western leaders, you know, record Easter messages and, and statements and, oh, we, we wish you well. How can you do that and then drop bombs on Palestinians, on Syrians, on Lebanese? You know, many in the West, they don't even know, they don't even grasp that there are Christians in this land. As a matter of fact, they were told that there was no one in this land, that it was a land without a people. <laughs> well, guess what? They are wrong on all counts because not only are there Arab Christians, but the people who laid the foundation of the Palestinian resistance were Christians. Wadiya Haddad, Hassan Kanafani, George Habash, Archbishop Capucci, Archbishop Atallah, Anis al Naqash, Daniel Abu Hamama, Michel Mukharba, Hanan Ashrawi, George Abdullah. Just as Jesus was persecuted and killed, many of these Arab Christians, these towering figures in the resistance against the, the Israeli occupation, they were also persecuted, killed, separated from their families. And then they talk about Christianity in the West while they not only ignore the plight of Christians in the Holy Land, they are the plight of Christians. How dare they mention Jesus as they're bombing churches and displacing Christians. How dare they say happy Ramadan one minute and then the next they drop bombs on mosques. A thousand mosques they destroyed in Gaza. Just as Ramadan and Easter overlap, so does the solidarity, this brotherly resistance against Israeli occupation. It overlaps between Muslims and Christians. And just like Jesus was, was persecuted and crucified, he was resurrected. Gaza will be too. Palestinians, they have their own cross to bear, their own crown of thorns that they have to wear. But just like Jesus was crucified, killed, persecuted, and then resurrected, Gaza, Palestine, Syria will also be resurrected. This is what you have to remember. These people in the West are despicable. They, they know nothing about religion. They know, they know nothing about Christianity. They know no, nothing about Islam. They, look at this, for example, this... Uh, uh, Ambassador Greenfield, the U.S. ambassador, she comes here and posts a photo, you know, s saying that she, she just broke the fast, iftar. She broke the fast, trying to pretend like she, she has Muslim friends or she hangs out with Muslims. And then she goes to the U.N. And, and, and she vetoes ceasefires so that she can drop more bombs on, on Muslims. I mean, you, you can't make this up. And this, this, this scumbag as well. Keir Starmer, the same thing, po posting a photo that he broke the fast with Muslims. He had iftar during the holy month of Ramadan. What do you know about holiness? What do you know about Ramadan? You're, you're, I mean, it's scandalous. And, the, and on top of that, the Israelis have barred Christians from, from entering the, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, from entering the old, old city during Easter. So not only t tourists, not only people who've come from, in, you know, who usually come uh, 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 are unable to, to attend, but just the people who live there, you know. As Christians around the world prepare to celebrate Easter, Palestinians in the land that birthed the religion are facing severe restrictions on entering Jerusalem's old city to mark the occasion. While at least 200 leaders from the occupied West Bank have been given permits to enter the area, their congregations are not being allowed access to participate in the services. The restrictions are unprecedented. I mean, truly shame on the Israelis. Truly shame on them. This is Easter in the land where Christianity was born. Israel's war on Gaza has impacted this important Christian holiday. Very few of the faithful who travel from all over the world have arrived this year to visit the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in the old city of occupied East Jerusalem. Fayyaz Dekak 
runs this family store selling religious souvenirs. The shop's open and he wipes away the dust ready for a day's trading, but he's not expecting to make any sales. He says the war is on everyone's minds. He's been here for 20 years and tells us the situation is far worse than he can remember. We've been feeling a lot more uncomfortable this time because, you know, there's, there's the profiling. You know, if you're passing by any gate, whether it's Damascus Gate, New Gate, Jaffa Gate, if the police officer or the, you know, the soldier uh, feels that he, you are not Israeli, you're stopped, you're checked. Uh, sometime, and most of the time it's not very pleasant either. Uh, some of them are, you know, just straightforward, where are you from, let me say some ID. Some are a bit more violent. The economic impact is clear. Most shops aren't even bothering to open. But beyond dollars and shekels, there's another impact as well. Rafi is a Christian youth coordinator and says that Israeli settlers have made the old city an almost no-go zone for Christians. Even before the war started, uh, we saw how was the, the settlers uh, uh, attacking the churches, the, even, even the cemeteries, the Christian cemeteries. They were attacking any priest or any nun who was walking uh, inside Jerusalem. Even the pilgrims who are carrying the cross and walking the way of the cross, they were uh, under attack by the uh, Israeli settlers. The occupation is visible everywhere. But it did, did you hear that? That's what the Israelis do. The Israelis literally spit on priests today. That, that is how they treat Christians. They vandalize Christian cemeteries. They spit at pilgrims. They walk by churches and spit. And, and then they, they have the nerve to, to pretend that they are oppressed and, and uh, that, you know, the, uh, the, the Israel that they're building is, is it's, you know, it accepts all religions. How disgusting. What an absolute lie. The Israelis persecute Christians just like they persecute Muslims. The Israelis, they even tried to say that this is a, a Jewish tradition to spit on Christians. No, it's not. The Jews in, in Syria, you know, like actual Semitic Jews, like actual Semites, they, they, they don't do this stuff. You know, they just, the, the Israelis just make up lies. Spitting at Christians is some Ashkenazi bullshit. That's not something that Jews who come from the Middle East actually do. And then they, they I mean, like to say that, to say that is legitimately actually anti-Semitic. To come here and say that, yeah, Jews spitting at Christians is a Jewish tradition, is, is made up and it's actually anti-Semitic. Who the hell are you? Who the hell are you? Where have you, you come from, you colonizer, you come here, you steal the land, you steal the religion, you, you steal everyone's rights, you treat them like shit. I mean, it's incredible. It, it's unbelievable. They are so scandalous. They have no shame. And the same thing for these, these so-called leaders. Leaders of what? What does Keir Starmer lead? What, what, what does he lead? What, what does Ambassador Greenfield lead? What does Joe Biden lead? A cabinet of war criminals? Yeah, okay. Maybe he leads that. I'm, I'm, I'm really sick of these people with their, their Easter statements and their Christmas messages and their holy Ramadan messages. Again, what, who the hell are you to talk about these topics? And at the same time, you, you kill Christians, you, you turn Christians into refugees, you bomb the place where Jesus was born, you desecrate the, the holy sites, you, you desecrate even Ma'lula. You know where I got this cross in Ma'lula? That's one of the last places on earth where they speak Aramaic, which is what Jesus spoke. What, what did they do to Ma'lula? They sent Al-Qaeda. That's what the Americans gave Syria. They sent Al-Qaeda and they kidnapped the nuns. Can you believe that? So th th this is why, just like Easter and, and Ramadan overlap, so does the resistance. Like I said, Christians, Arab Christians, pioneered the resistance that you see today. They're not the only ones, but some of the biggest figures. I mean, George Abdullah is still in prison. The longest serving political prisoner in Europe. What, what is it now? 37 years he's been in prison? And who, who made sure of that? The Americans, right? With their Christian values, right? 
so so merciful hillary clinton and victoria newland and barack obama you know when they when they call up the french and say yeah yeah stop him being released even though he's scheduled to be released not keep him in prison for the rest of his life how merciful how christian of them how christian of them how christian of the americans to bomb palestine how christian of them to bomb syria and bomb lebanon and give the israelis weapons how Christian of you, Joe Biden. Well done, you goddamn scumbag. Let me show you this island that the, uh, well, the airstrip that the Americans are building, that Joe Biden is building. So the United States are building an airstrip that they don't want a lot of people to know about, but they haven't done a good job at concealing. And they're building this in Yemen on Saqatra Island. Now, before I proceed, you have to understand two things about Saqatra. It's beautiful and it's strategic. It's beautiful and it's strategic. I, I swear to God, I'm going I'm to do this in front of you. If you look up photos of this island, you will not believe it, it looks like another planet. It, it is freakishly beautiful. Look at, look at this. Unbelievable beauty. And what have, what have the imperialists done? The Israelis, the UAE, and the Americans have colonized the island. They have put spy stations, military installations on it, and now the Americans are building this. They are putting this monstrosity that no one gave them permission to build on top of it. And it, they, they write here, I love UAE. They're trying to make it look like, you know, some tourist. Because, you, like I said, they've colonized the island. So you have to go through the UAE if you want to visit, if you can visit. They, they want to make it look like it's a, a, an Emirati installation. This is an American strip. And the reason that they, they, they've stolen this island, I mean, just look at, look at its position. Look at its position. It sits at the gate of everything. The Gulf of Aden, the Bab el Mendeb Strait, the Strait of Hormuz, at the mouth of the Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean. It's not going to help them, though. I can tell you that. It's not going to help whatever plan the Israelis and Americans have because they are, they are in a losing war. But these thieves have taken this from Yemen and what they have done is um again i have a big analysis video coming out tomorrow a huge analysis video about the region about what what's happening in the world right now you'll hear more about yemen then i'm not going to spoil it but shame on these thieves and just to give you an idea of how screwed they are because they think they're going to get one up on yemen do you know how many ships yemen have struck to this date comment right now in the, in the comment section i will i will See if one of you guesses the right figure. Some of you are saying 50, 55, 114, 10, 3,165. Felix, Felix is the lucky winner. Felix's guess was the closest. He said 80, it's 86. The Houthis have struck 86 ships. I mean, that, that, is, that is insane. I don't, know how, <laughs> I don't know if any of us saw that coming or, or were able to foresee such, you know, su such a, um, a score. But it's, it's truly wild. 86 ships. Now, keep in mind, they don't want to sink the ships. Yemen are not in the business of killing people like the Americans and the Israelis. The, the Yemeni protocol is as follows. If you're a passing ship and they know you have ties to Israel... You're, I don't know, you're taking food to them, you're feeding the Israeli enemy, you're, pro, you, you know, uh, helping them profit in some way. The protocol is to, to radio the ship and say, divert. You have to divert to Hudaydah. You're not, you're not passing the Bab el Mendeb Strait. And when they refuse to, to abide, they then fire on them. Some of them turn back usually, some of them don't. But this is their blockade. And unfortunately, three people passed away, but that was not their intent. Because if were their intent, no, no ship would have made it out. Okay, I'm just telling you that. 
But Socotra Island is very beautiful. And it, it, it saddens me to see this because the people who live there, you know, they, they are sick of the UAE profiting off of it. And I want to show you the, the confirmation. We have the satellite photo that I just showed you here. But also we have the, the letter signed by the elders on Socotra Island confirming that the Americans are building something there. They say they, re you, the, you see the, the logo is very nice. It's the, the, the tree that you find there. But they, they say very clearly that they reject the illegal American presence. So this is not just a UAE thing or an Israeli thing like it was before. This is the, the United States expanding its military footprint, <laughs> which is a very nice way of saying uh, its, imperialist, uh, uh, its imperialist web of bases. So, you know, in some attempt to posture against the Houthis, it's not going to work. The Americans attacked Yemen for years, you know, almost 10 years through the Saudis with the GCC. And what did that get them? They're bombing Yemen right now, the US and the UK. What did that get them? This will only yield a harsher response. I guarantee you this. The, Ye the Yemenis, the Houthis have not officially responded. They haven't made an announcement yet about this, but they will in good time. And remember, the equation has changed. We are in a post-October 7 world, right? We're in a post-October 7 world. The resistance today is very different from how it used to be. It is much more ready to engage now. The, you know, they're not afraid of anything because all bets are off. You know, you want to commit genocide in Gaza? Okay, well then, the, you know, everybody else is also not going to play by the rules. The equation has changed and it is, it is to, the, to the detriment of the Israelis and the Americans and their presence in the region. And one day, I guarantee you, one day they will be kicked off the island. Even if Yemen have to send, uh, uh, you know, a bunch of ships to capture it, they will do that. Make no mistake. Make no mistake. Thank you very much, Samir, who says, uh, Salam alaikum, wa alaikum as -salam. My brother, appreciate all the work you do. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much, Samir. I appreciate that. Ahlan um, wa sahlan. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really nice to, to, to hear from all of you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Suzuki, for joining on Patreon. I owe you a crab dance, and then we shall proceed with the rest of the segments. Everyone, show some love to uh, Suzuki. <laughs> Suzuki are those trucks that you would see in, uh, in Syria. You know, you have a million Suzukis. <laughs> Clap for that, you stupid bastard. Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. boys. Listen, fuckhead. You fucking crossed the line. Claiming I'm the enemy. You got that, you goddamn son of a bitch? I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. Good morning. Sunday morning, morning. Cut that bitch out. Thank you for Iron Dome. We lied, we cheated, we sneaked off the wall. China. 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 And you ain't black. There's always the macro. And then there's the micro. Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. You talking to me? Ladies and gentlemen, I'll have two number nines, a number nine large. We got them. Because I have to do it myself. I know it's not. <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. <laughs> oh. Disgusting. She was 12, I was 30, but anyway. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Why a text Why, 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 Please like the video. Please share the video. The, um, I'm trying not to swear. 
they demonetize my channel because I tell the truth about Israel and I tell the truth about the US and the UK. That's the reason. If you're able to donate, please do because I used to earn most of my money. I used to earn a living mainly through YouTube. They took that away and I'm trying to make up for it now. So if you can donate on PayPal, I'd very much appreciate it. If you can donate on Patreon um, on a monthly basis, I'd be very grateful. And uh, thank you to those who are donating on Rumble as well. We've got a couple of donations to read to you. I just, before I continue, I wanted to say <laughs> what, what one person said, I call it six eyes. It's like Mossad. Um, it's like Mossad in charge of five eyes. <laughs> we have one here from Bert Jesus says, the media say ISIS is behind the Moscow terror attack. Do you think it could be in interconnected somehow? Uh, thinking Islamophobia, Israel plans regarding the economic corridor, NATO's war against Russia. I'm glad you asked me. It's funny you asked me because I just filmed before I went live. I just filmed my next analysis video. So I hate to, uh, to be a tease, but you're going to have to wait to tomorrow to find out. But I promise you, you'll find the answer to your question in the analysis video that I'll post tomorrow. Um, Raj, who says, who are these Muslims breaking fast with Keir Starmer? Why are they breaking fast with the devil? I, <laughs> exactly. I would I also like to know. Um, Jody says, I choose you to be my voice for sadly, I don't know what else I can do to make a difference. Feeling helpless in the United States of America. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jody. Um, I, I try my best because, uh, I simply get mad at this stuff. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful, uh, that you've all entrusted me with the task and AC World Traveler says, uh, Richard, do you think Ansar Allah can surround the Western occupied part of Yemen and kick them out? Um, I think they can ultimately, but not just yet, because right now the main concern is with Gaza. And of course, they want to make sure the blockade stays in place. So what the Americans are trying to do is open up. Um, well, again, you'll see in the, the next video, but it takes time and they can't do it now. I don't think they can. Uh, but you'll see, in, in my opinion, with this war, what's going to happen is that it, you will have moments where land will be lost or captured, and I think uh, for the resistance, land will be taken back because the Israelis will not be able, the Americans and Israelis are not able to contend with a resistance on six fronts. And while they're busy with one front, they will lose land on a fourth or third front, for example. And I think we'll see that in Lebanon and we'll see it in Yemen first and foremost. And of course, uh, Gaza must be one of the top three, uh, you know, in, uh, in my opinion. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Nothing is predictable in war. Thank you, Stargazer and Senior Cynic, for the donations on Rockfin. I'm most grateful to you guys. Um, let me show you something here. This is really so typical. It's so typical. Okay? So... Okay. Um... Actually, one, one moment. Forgive me. I just need one second to, to pull something up for you. Okay, here's one. Okay, and here's a second. So, let's go. So, the Israelis attacked the UN a mission in Lebanon, in South Lebanon. This is UNIFIL. They are the uh, peacekeeping uh, mission and observer force that is based uh, uh, in South Lebanon. My parents both served there. And I want to show you the headline. This is from Sky News. They say several people injured after shell explodes near UN observers in, in Southern Lebanon. I mean, the, the language is so ridiculous. A shell exploded. What, what does that mean, a shell exploded? Did I fire at them? You know, maybe I fired at them from thousands of kilometers away. I fired the shell. Why don't you say that? Did a shell, you know, just a, there was a dud lying around and it went off. What does that mean? What does that mean? A shell went off. But was it a clam shell, perhaps? I mean, they try this evasive language that they use to absolve Israel of any responsibility or guilt is so amazing. And I know, I know that it, this is Israel because si since my parents' time, the only... The only people who would fire at the United Nations are the Israelis. No one else fires at the UN. No one. 
The UN have even had uh, staff members and, and uh, peacekeepers killed. Just like you're seeing in Gaza, they've had peacekeepers, uh, although in Gaza it's, it's uh, their staff, but the peacekeeper in, in uh, Lebanon in the Qana massacre, they had a bunch of civilians in a UN uh, installation, and you know the Israelis just fire at it, Hundreds of people injured. Uh, I think four Fiji peacekeepers killed. It's, it's a regular thing. You had some uh, peacekeepers from Ghana who were also injured once by the... Only the Israelis do this stuff. Only the Israelis. And there were other reports here that it was a drone strike, actually. It wasn't a shell. But just so, something that, that, that caught my eye, which was, which, again, which is so ridiculous, is the way that the UN, the UN write about this. Uh, you know, the, the UNIFIL mission. Let me show you, for example, this post from, from 14 hours ago. They say here that this morning, three UNSO military observers and one Lebanese language assistant on a foot patrol along the blue line were injured when an explosion occurred near their location. What does that mean, an explosion? Did, you know, did someone test a nuclear bomb? There was a firecracker. What, what kind of an explosion? Who caused the explosion? What caused the explosion? It, again, this evasive language. To me, this, this looks like an Israeli wrote it. And unfortunately, you know, um, these UN missions are very big, right? You have, uh, you've got the diplomatic staff. You've got the soldiers from like Spain, um, from, from Austria, from a whole bunch of nations, right? And, and the French, of course, the French in this mission, I mean, their reputation is disgusting. Like, really disgusting, you know? But, uh, so I'm not saying it's true of the whole mission, but certain troops, well, they behave like the French have always behaved in, in Lebanon, like arrogant colonizers, so no surprise. But um, my point is that the, the Israelis infiltrate UN missions through uh, diplomatic staff, or it could be soldiers, uh, or it could be uh, spies, you know, they have a very various means of doing this. But in general, that, I mean, that's one thing, but in general, they have, they have uh, you know, they have expected, they've come to expect a level of pussy whipping that involves all institutions, not just governments, but even, even the UN, using this, this kind of soft language in order to absolve Israel, which I think is disgusting. The same thing can be said of Gaza. Look at the many UN statements. You have people literally in Gaza. They're being shot at by the Israelis. And, and, and they, they still use this abstract language. And, oh, we urge the Israelis. What do you mean you urge? Give them the goddamn finger. Anyway, here, Elijah wrote this. He said, an escalation and intensity of bombardment and target killing relatively contained are expected between Hezbollah and Israel. Israel just bombed, hit, and wounded four UNIFIL soldiers and officers in uh, the south of Lebanon while in their vehicle in the village of Ramesh. I mean, he, he's right. I, it, this is, uh, you know, it, I agree with him both ways because it is unprecedented in the sense that they haven't done it for a while, but it's also co you know, par for the course with the Israelis. What, what else do they do besides murdering civilians and shooting at peacekeepers? That is the only function that Israelis have. That's all they do. That's all they do. I, 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 me and Elijah agree. Don't worry. <laughs> but look at this post from the Israelis. It's so ridiculous. They say, contrary to the reports, the IDF did not strike a UNIFIL vehicle. Uh, this, I mean, th this is pathetic, really. The way they lie is unbelievable. They, they could tell you, no, the sun did not rise anywhere on Earth this morning. It's true. There was no sun. Are you being anti-Semitic? <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? Again, just to give you uh, an idea of what we're talking about. This is Palestine, not Israel. There's no such thing as Israel. This is Lebanon. And again, I don't know who is um, making maps with no legend. Sorry, this really makes me angry. <laughs> Please do not color maps if you're not going to say what the fucking colors mean, okay? These lines here are supposed to mean illegally um, occupied Syrian Golan Heights, illegally occupied by Israel. But of course, it's not good for Israel 
to put a legend on the map because then it would show that the Israelis are illegal occupiers. So they just, they, you know, they remove the legend entirely. Who needs legends? Yeah, just, you know, let's put maps with random colors. The green is an area where you have banana production. The orange is the area where llamas eat koalas and so on and so on, right? Who cares about colors? It doesn't make any difference. Just do it, scribble lines like a child. <clears throat> Forgive me. This is another video which made me uh, uh, cringe. Let me show you this. It's, it's really something. So this is David Cameron uh, talking to one of the UN agencies, the, the one that's uh, for, for women, right? The FPA. Uh, just, just watch the video. It's, it's, really, it's really actually that bad. Thousands of these British aid is paying for them to get into Gaza for the women and girls who badly need them. This is the Dignity Pack, right? Yeah, the Dignity Pack. The, the Dignity Pack. Oh, really? Because, you know, David Cameron, uh, he really honors and dignifies Arab women, especially Palestinian women, that he b helps to bomb. He really cares about them, just like he dignifies women in Yemen, which he also helped starve and which he now continues to bomb and kill and starve. Yes, he really cares about women's dignity. All right, can't you see? Look at the bag. Who came up with this great idea? In 2000, UNFPA sounded the alarm saying yeah. kids don't cater to women and girls' needs. Right. So UNFPA piloted the first bunch of kits, right. um, and we call them the Dignity Kits. Right. So we've got the washing powder, the tampons, we've got the soap, toothbrush, toothpaste, we've got underwear, reusable pads, and we've got the shampoo, and crucially... I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, these things are good. There's nothing wrong with the bag, but the fact that he is holding it, I mean, it's like, it's like giving, um, let me think of something. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it's like giving someone who, who you know, uh, shoots puppies uh, a brush for dogs. That, that's what it looks like. Or giving someone who, who shoots down planes, uh, you know, um, uh, a bloody, a, a, a toy's play, you know, a child's toy play. I mean, it, it, it's so condescending and ridiculous. It's so insulting. He that he he packs these things and he does this like put this promo video as if he he of all people gives a crap about women. I mean, it's really it's really something else. The, remember the, the this is not just oh he's pretending to care about Palestinians, dude. Most of the victims in Gaza are women and children. That's the number one victim. So it's not just Palestinians in general. It's specifically women and children that he is killing. Um, the so how many of these have we done in Gaza? With UK funding, we're going to do up to 20,000. So how much do these kits cost? For that, that is costing? 12 pounds. 12 pounds. Really? Great. It's a really good pack. But we also brought the safe birth kits. So this is someone who's... who's you know, heavily pregnant, about to give birth, and, but they could be in a refugee camp in a tent. This is what allows us to do a safe delivery. Right. Um, it has um, a cloth, it has gloves, it has a soap to wash the hands. Right. There's no sanitation. We are delivering. There's no sanitation. Wow. Why don't you ask David Cameron why there is no sanitation? Because I showed you a clip earlier and a few months ago when he was being asked if it's a war crime for the Israelis to turn off the water in Gaza. Please go ahead and ask him, especially him. Go on. Oh, you can't because why he said he's, oh yeah, he's not a lawyer. That's what he said. He doesn't have the paper in front of him right now. He, he, he's not a lawyer. He doesn't know. <laughs> He, look, he looks so disappointed, he's like, 180? Well, we're trying to kill far... I mean, we're trying to kill more than that. Hold on. <laughs> and of what, that's some in the hospital still. Yes, some the ones of them, still yes. Working, but some of them... Oh, he, the hospitals. <laughs> Why don't we talk about the hospitals? Because since, you know, most of them have been bombed by Israel using British weapons and, of course, German and American. What? Go on. Go and talk about it. You're the foreign secretary, right? You're the big man. Out in the ocean with these kids. But if, if they are, if they can be used, they will be used, and they are life saving. Life saving. Thank you very much. I mean, I, I look. 
I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what to say. I'm, I got nothing against the woman. I don't even know who she is. But, I, you know, and I got nothing against the UN. There are lots and lots of people in the UN who do good work. My parents were in the UN. But the UN doesn't work because of people like David Cameron. The UN fails to achieve anything because of people like him. He is the foreign secretary. He, he tells the, the diplomats to go to the UN in New York and Geneva and Vienna and sabotage anything that is remotely good for people in the Middle East, meaning no imperialism, uh, no bombing, no Israeli occupation. Always, always, always just sabotage that. You know, it's, it's all about uh, his interests, the Israelis' interests, Rothschild's interests, the bank's interests. After all, that's who he serves, right? That's who he serves. They, they, they put the seal, right? They have the flag and the seal, the royal seal. But who do they really serve? Who do they really serve? It's the corporations. It's the corporations. David Cameron works for corporations, just like every British politician, and, uh, except George Galloway. But, the, you know, it's so insulting having him come and do this kind of, you know, promo, like, as if he cares. He, I, really, I mean, it's so... It, it's, it's dystopian in, in many ways because we are not talking about any British politician. He is specifically the man who is helping the UK and steering it in this direction. And I know if it weren't him, it would be somebody else. It would be another goon or sp you know, spook or uh, G-man uh, that they would get to come and do this. Yeah, but it's him right now. So I will criticize him. And I, when he was... During his premiership, when he was the prime minister, what did he do in Syria? What did he do? He's, he's, he pretended not to bomb it, and then he sent the SAS in the, in the back, you know, secretly. And then they were giving non-lethal aid to the rebels, so-called rebels, who then turn out to be very lethal rebels with very lethal aid. Oh, and actually their name is Al-Qaeda, but now it's been rebranded. He's a terrorist. David Cameron is a terrorist. That's who he is. He is a woman killer. He is a, a killer of children. He is a merchant of death and destruction. And that is not my opinion. This is, that is a statistical, quantifiable fucking fact. Let me show you the new president of Senegal. He is serious about his business. Okay, so... And... <laughs> You're, you're going to love the reaction, my friends. My friends. Oh. So, here, let me show you. Senegal just elected a new president. And this man is not messing around. There he is. Basiru Jomi Fai. I hope I'm saying his name correctly because I love his policies and I love how he speaks. But I want to show you uh, a member of his party who was, who was actually imprisoned along with him not even a month ago. Okay, and I want to show you, his name is Osman Sonko, and I want to show you a speech that he gave. People have been uh, uh, posting this, uh, you know, all around the internet thinking that this is the president, that he, in, right here where my mouse is, that this Mr. Sonko is the president. He's not the president, but he is in the same political party uh, as the new president. And I want you to listen to what he has to say. It is high time for France to lift its knee off our neck and put an end to this unjust oppression. Centuries of misery, human trafficking, colonization, and neocolonization have caused immeasurable suffering. It's time to put an end to this cycle of oppression. It's high time for France to leave us alone. It's time for France to take a cue from its European neighbors and learn a valuable lesson in independence. Germany is the leading economic power in Europe, significantly surpassing France, which is ranked as the third or fourth largest economic power globally. Germany does not exploit any country, any colony. I can mention Italy, I can mention Spain, who had colonies before, but who do not exploit anyone, who do not interfere, who do not impose leaders in their former colonies. On what grounds does France believe it can continue to impose leaders on us and make <laughs> choices on our behalf? This must come to an end. Mm -hmm. And the emerging Africa, the African youth, the African elites, and the African diaspora all stand united in saying no, it cannot continue any longer. France's hypocrisy is evident and pervasive in daily life. 
Let's examine the cases of Mali and Chad as prime examples of this hypocrisy. In Chad, where the constitutional process has been interrupted, France applauded and its president visited to officially consecrate the new king's coronation ceremony. In Mali, where it is not the constitutional process that has been interrupted, but the transition process, France has condemned and even packed up its things to say that it is leaving Mali. That's hypocrisy. It's the double standard. It is the double language that France employs in its dealings with Africa. During our questioning of Mr. Jean-Yves Le Drian regarding the situation in Ivory Coast and France's decision to allow a third term, he provided a clear explanation. He stated that while he accepted the third term for Ouattara, he refuses it for Belarus. He emphasized that France has condemned the situation in Belarus and has actively encouraged the European Union to do the same. Le Drian explains that in Belarus, millions protested, unlike Ivory Coast, where there were no mass demonstrations on the streets. This is how France deals with African issues. Personally, we expect absolutely nothing from France. We desire her to cease meddling in our matters so that the people of Senegal can exercise their freedom of choice rather than being influenced by France's selection of a candidate using the tactics we are aware of. We begin by targeting individuals, adorning them with the Legion of Honor or a similar knightly rank, enlisting them in Masonic lodges and informing them to prepare themselves as they will be next in line. Even the hypothesis that Macky Sall may not succeed, we know who is being prepared by France. This must come to an end. It will not occur in this manner any longer. Let's be clear. We have absolutely nothing against the French people. In France, both political and citizen voices are rising to hold and express the same discourse as the one I'm currently presenting to you. For example, the deputies, such as Mrs. Frédéric Dumas, who regularly speaks on the platform of the Assembly, who regularly writes to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, since she is a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, to raise this unfair behavior of France towards Africa, hold the same speech as us. The same Mr. Jean-Luc Mélenchon, Jean-Paul Lecoq, André Chassaigne, all deputies, hold the same discourse as us and hundreds and hundreds of other voices. The NGO NGOs, like other nonprofit organizations, are doing remarkable work in the same direction. We strongly urge France to listen to the voices that speak to it about our plan for a more collaborative, fairer, and sustainable partnership between Africa and France. It is crucial that we work together towards a future that is equitable, just, and environmentally conscious. If she listens, I believe we'll have beautiful days ahead in our collaboration together. If he doesn't know how to cut it, thinking he can continue to function like in the time of our grandfathers, this African youth no longer accepts it. France must make preparations for a definitive break and completely withdraw from Africa. Africa belongs to Africans, not France. She belongs to no one else, neither China, nor the United States, nor anyone else. Exactly. Amen. Exactly. And the same of the Middle East. The Middle East belongs to no one but the Arabs, the real Arabs, not the ones who uh, enlist in, in these, uh, you know, Masonic lodges and uh, receive knighthoods and favors from the French and the British and the Americans. You know, to, to me, I love hearing this because I think this guy is about my age. I don't know. I'm, I'm just guessing from, you know, the, the, the one video that we watched. Um, but what he said is correct, you know, like the youth, us, we are interested in decolonization. And when we say that, we really mean it. Before it was difficult. It was, it was much more difficult. I understand that in 45, it was much more difficult. Look at the, the Vietnamese, look at the Algerians. They really lost millions of people uh, trying to decolonize from the French. So it, it's... it's it's easier said than done, but we're doing our best. And the fact that he won, it has the French scared. Let me play you a video from French TV 
I'm going to translate for you. It's so funny. It's so funny. I think you can already guess what they're going to say. You already know what they're going to say. You know, before I play it, I'm going to wait like 30 seconds just to see what you guys guess. Tell me in the comments right now what you think they were going to say about uh, him and his party coming to power. Remember, this is Sonko, Mr. Sonko, Osman Sonko. He's not the president, but he is uh, uh, one of the more known figures in the uh, new president's uh, in the new president's camp. So some of you are saying the French will, will accuse Senegal of, uh, of Russia, of <laughs> being with Russia, something racist, uh, that he is a terrorist, that it's a Russian plot. Yeah, you kind of got it. You know, you, you, you uh, kind of got it. That's, that's the gist of it. Let's play. Nouvelles industries pétrolières et gazières, ou est-ce qu'il va réussir à imposer... Est-ce qu'il va redistribuer un peu Est-ce qu'il va redistribuer les richesses Est-ce qu'il va être à la hauteur de toutes ces promesses qu'il a tenues Un homme charismatique. Sénégal... Okay, so they're saying, well, oh, is he really going to be able to, you know, deliver on these promises that, well, we have to see... Now they're talking about Sonko, they're saying, oh, he's very charismatic, you know. Dont le président élu ce soir, donc, à Dakar, est le bras droit. Yeah, right, and they're just explaining that he's the right-hand man of the president. The one I just played to you, right, Sonko. Mais c'est Ousmane Sonko, ah oui, charismatique, grand orateur, Mais certains, qui fait figure de vrai patron. Certains avaient dit que dès que, euh, effectivement, Bassirou Diamaïfaï arriverait au pouvoir, euh, il allait casser euh, l'interdiction de se présenter et, permettre, et refaire des élections pour mettre, promettre à Ousmane Sonko d'être euh, président. Right, so they're, they're, they're accusing him, well, they're repeating an accusation that as soon as um, uh, Bassirou gets the power, he's going to... Uh, you know, change the rules so that Sonko can run in his place and be the president. Some weird uh, not nonsense. No, but just première question: Is that going to be a democracy? So she she chimes in. She says, first question: Is it actually going to stay a democracy? On a vu, on a vu quand même fondamentalement qu'il y a ce type de, de régime. Après, ça, ça peut basculer la personnalité. Uh, et puis la question, c'est le lien avec la France. Uh, ça continue. Je veux dire, on est dans. And she says, well, you know, with this kind of regime, she, she already says the word regime, uh, you know, things can change very easily depending on the person or rather personality, the figurehead. And then she says, and how, how is the relationship with France going to continue? That's, that's what she's really interested in, that money, those African resources, huh? une dégradation de notre présence en Afrique qui est extrêmement inquiétante. Et là, c'est un des plus grands pays, des pays leaders, uh, oui. She said France is, um, well, its presence in Africa is, um, is uh, well, she didn't say slowly coming to an end, but she said that it's their presence in France is, uh, sorry, the France's presence in Africa is uh, falling apart. Ça continue, je veux dire, on est dans une dégradation de notre présence en Afrique qui est extrêmement inquiétante, et là c'est... Un des plus grands pays, des pays leaders. Euh, oui, donc euh, il faut vraiment s'y intéresser de près. Pascal bah, Le pétrole peut être, enfin les hydrocarbures peuvent être une malédiction. Oui. C'est pas nécessaire. Now he's saying, oh well, you know, um, petrol, oil basically, and, and these natural resources, they can be, uh, you know, very bad. Why? Let's go on to hear what he said, what, what he goes oui. on to say. C'est pas nécessairement un, oui. un outil de, de croissance. On, on... He said it's not necessarily you know, something that promotes growth. On constate une espèce regardez. de symétrie entre l'augmentation de la richesse, notamment géologique, et euh, l'avancement des dictatures ou des régimes autoritaires. <laughs> He says that there's a correlation between the discovery of natural resources and, and uh, the uh, rise in dictatorships. So he's... he's <laughs> yeah, you know why? Because the American and the European corporations, they see, oh, look, there's some oil. Let's go and take the oil. And then people get pissed off and they elect someone who is very direct, authoritarian, says, fuck off out the country. And then you have wars, right? <laughs> Where the, the imperialists say, oh, look, there's no human rights over there. He, this guy's a dictator. Look how he treats his people. He's a this and that. He threw a baby out of a window. He kills puppies. You know, quick, let's go attack him, bomb him. <laughs> Man, it, they're so typical, these blockheads. They're such a bunch of blockheads. They're so funny. Look at them sitting there with their stupid goddamn posture. Puissant de la France, oui. Il y a aujourd'hui une vraie tentative de la Russie de nous sortir de ces marchés. Russia! Now it's about Russia. He says, 
oh, well, about France's presence, you know, the Russians, there's a real attempt by the Russians to kick us out of these markets. This is what Africa is to them. This is what other countries are to the imperialists. They don't see countries on a globe, on a map, as, you know, sovereign, uh, authentic, legitimate uh, foreign lands. No, no, no. It's a market. It's a market. Who can we do business with the easiest? Are you good for us? Good. Here's a knighthood. Here's a, you know, uh, a medal. Oh, you're not good for us? Here's some bombs. Plus arrive sur ces marchés, qui étaient des marchés traditionnellement français, on a des céréales notamment, dans ce pays, mais dans d'autres. Et les Russes arrivent avec des politiques publiques qui sont abondées par de l'argent, la fédération de Russie, avec une consigne, mais une seule, qui est de sortir les Français de ces marchés. Alors là, au Sénégal, je ne sais pas si la présence russe... OK, let's say what he's saying is true, that the Russians... All they're interested in is, is, you know, getting the, the French out. Good. Good. Tant mieux. Tant mieux. On a vu ce que ça donne la France. We've seen what the French do in Africa. We've seen what they do to Africa. Is it good? Is it pretty? Is it good for Africans? No, it's not good for anyone except France. Let, let's say what he, you're saying is true. It, the Russians just want to kick the French out. Okay, let's see how the Russians do. They can't be as bad as you, that's for sure. <laughs> if that's if that if that's really what it's about, they can't be as bad as you. It's impossible. Ça peut être comparé à ce qui s'est passé non. au Burkina, au Mali. Non, mais non, parce que là, c'est pas un coup d'État. Peut-on imaginer, oui, peut malgré pas. tout, que cette région reste vierge de toute influence Mais en tout cas, il y aura diversification des contrats commerciaux, ça, il l'a beaucoup dit. Right, so they, they were just trying to compare it for a second to, you know, the big, the big kick in the ass that they got a few months ago in Niger. That was, a, that was beautiful. That was, I mean, that was masterfully done. I, my respect for Niger doubled and then quadrupled and octadupled. <laughs> the way they, 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 so they kicked the French and then the Americans out. I mean, no, no. <laughs> no, how did you do that? It's one thing to kick the French out. It's another to kick the Americans out today. I mean, they're very smart. They're very, like, that was, that was tactical. That was surgical and clinical, what they did. They know the Americans are busy with Gaza, with Israel, with Ukraine. They don't have fucking time now for Niger. Good. We're not going to kick you out. We're just, you know, we don't want to renew the contract. Sorry. <laughs> Mwah. Beautifully done. And once again, if you want to say that Russia is involved, good. Because what, what I see from the results is, is Niger independent now? Yes, Niger is independent. Oh, the Russians played a part? Good, good, for, good for the Russians. Thank you to the Russians. Wonderful. The Russians can help kick European imperialists out? Good, let's go. Bring the Russians. If, if, that, if that's who is needed to get the job done, please come in and do this. <laughs> it's, it's not, but like, even if you want to assume that what they're saying is true, that they're, they're nonsense. Good, it's still good. It's better than them, that's for sure. That is for sure. And I can tell you, Senegal, given its resources, uh, that we are going to witness a lot of um, accusations of uh, anti-democratic policies very, very soon, I guarantee you. This is the beginning. This is the beginning. I mean, the guy, the guy has barely even you know, gotten inaugurated and they're already coming with all the, the typical smears. Uh, maybe it's going to be a dictatorship, uh, not very democratic, you know. Mm, don't want to go that way. Uh, the Russians? Do the Russians have anything to do with this? Is this like Mali and Burkina, Burkina Faso and Chad and Niger? Are you one of those? Like, you're going to really do us bad? <laughs> They're crazy. These people are nuts. And they, they, they call themselves reporters. What, what is this except state propaganda? This is like listening to a bunch of cabinet ministers in the French, uh, in the French cabinet, in uh, the Elysee. That, that's, this is what the people in the French government would speak, uh, uh, would say and how they would speak. No? Correct me if I'm wrong. You can't because I'm not. <laughs> to hell with them, man. To hell with them. I'm so happy to see Africa rising and the resistance in the Arabic countries rising and the global south rising. Thank God. Thank God. Truly.
Thank you to Colm for the uh, uh, very generous uh, donation. It says, message from Ireland for Palestine. And thank you also. We have another one here from uh, Khan who says, gift Easter. Thank you very much. We have another over here. This is, uh, just give me a second. It's refreshing. This is from um, Kundalini says, you're doing a good job. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Steve, for joining on Patreon. And thank you also uh, to Basil who says, love from way of South Lebanon to Dearborn. You're appreciated, brother. Keep on keeping on. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, um, I'm really humbled by your messages, everyone. Thank you. And I owe Steve a crab dance, and then we'll proceed to the next one. Uh, again, thank you to all of you for supporting my work. Clap for that, you stupid bastard. Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. Listen, fuckhead. You have fucking crossed the line. Claiming I'm the enemy. You got that, you goddamn son of a bitch? <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch! Good morning. Sunday morning, morning. Cut that bitch out! Thank you for Iron Bell. Well, let's just live, Mr. Rahaya. Let's just We lied, we cheated, we sneaked off the door. China. 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 And you ain't black. There's always the macro. And then there's the micro. Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. You talking to me? Ladies and gentlemen, I'll have two number nines. A number nine large. We got him. Because I have to do it myself. I know it's not. No. <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. <laughs> oh. Disgusting. She was 12, I was 30, but anyway. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Why a tech center? Why, 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 You're getting nervous, man. Calm down. It's okay. Okay, 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 okay. Suck my dick and choke on it. I yield my time. Fuck you! <laughs> thank, thank you guys again so much. I put the links below. I'm, I, I want to continue, but before I do, I, I want to thank you for your, your kind donations. We've got a message here from Rem USA who says, RM, love your work. Peace. Thank you very much. And thank you, Eric. Says, Amen. Rise up. Thank you all. Um, and we have another one. Give me a second. I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, this, <laughs> this is from Gen Z who, uh, who says, Hello, Richard Dapper Dan from YouTube. Here, I have three months off, so I'll send some maps with the legends. <laughs> I just need a way to contact you. Okay, the email is richiemedhurst at gmail.com. I've put the uh, email in the chat, R-I-C-H-I medhurst.com. Thank you very much, Dapper Dan. <laughs> uh, uh, Andrea says, thank you for your voice and your your courage. Thank you very much. And um, I uh, actually, I wanted to show you guys a, a video here. This is from, give me a second. Um, maybe you, you saw this man. He was in London today, and... You know, I, Again, this is... I'll just play the... I'll just play the... Okay? So, I want to show you this clip, two clips from London. This is what happened to a man uh, who was talking about Hamas during a protest. This is an occupation, the same as the French did. The same as the French did against the Germans. What, what are you actually saying? I'm saying I fully support Hamas. They resisted the occupation. I fully support Hamas. You keep moving down. Don't give they resisted the occupation. He's saying they resist... I f he's saying I fully support Hamas. They resisted the... Uh, Occupation like the French did the Germans. Yes, he's absolutely correct. And and uh, I'll play. I'll show you what happened afterwards. Okay, this is a few a few minutes later. They arrested him. They they arrested him because he he said I fully support Hamas. Okay, well a few things to to, to unpack here. First of all, the the atrocious. 
uh, caption on this video says, it's another Easter miracle. A man who openly said he supported Hamas was arrested. What the fuck do you know about Easter? Again, I'm so sick of people in the West, these so-called Christians, hijacking uh, Christianity and using it to oppress Palestinians, basically meaning the brothers and sisters of Jesus. You, th these people are the devil. If you're a Zionist, you're a devil. You really are. You're the closest material thing to, to evil, to what uh, a devil could be. You, you are. I'm sorry, but what's happening in Gaza is, is one drop in the ocean compared to the last 75 years, the last centuries of all this European imperialism. Don't, you know, don't put Jesus in, in uh, talk, talk to me about Easter or about Jesus or about Christianity. Please go away. It, really, really th this is sickening. Arab Christians, I told you all these names, they were in the resistance. They're in the resistance. George Abdullah is still in prison. Uh, even though he finished the sentence, the Americans kept him there. I told you, uh, George Kanafani, uh, sorry, Hassan Kanafani, George Habash, um, Wadiya Haddad, ha uh, Hanan Ashrawi. I mean, th there's a million. Bishop Kapuchi, right? Bishop Atala. There's a million of them. They all engaged in various forms of resistance. Some of it is peaceful. Some of them were supplying weapons, like uh, Archbishop uh, Capucci. Uh, you know, some of them hijacking planes, like George Habash. I mean, th this is the resistance against the Israeli occupation. It it it's nothing to do with, uh, uh, you know, um, is Islamist extremism. And le let's say that it was only Muslim. Let's say, so what? It's, it's no less legitimate. It's no less legitimate. What this man is saying is correct. The, the, the resistance, whether we're talking about Hamas or Hezbollah or Syria or Yemen or Iran, the whole resistance axis or, or the Hashd al-Shaabi in Iraq, what they're doing is resisting an illegal occupation. The, what, what's funny and kind of uh, tragic at the same time is that these police who are carrying, on, carrying him off, carrying him away, if, do they even know? Do they even know how many... Uh, police, the Israelis killed. If this, if this, if they were alive 70 years ago, the Israelis would have killed them. They would have killed them. The Israelis have killed uh, tons of British police and soldiers and, you know, government officials. This is a fact. They massacred them. So why are they, why are they defending the Zionists? Once again, let's, let's talk about Hamas. Have Hamas ever attacked uh, a British interest? No. Have Hamas ever done an attack in Britain? No. Uh, have Hamas ever targeted British government officials, police, or soldiers? No. Have they targeted British citizens? No. Have the Israelis done all of these things? Yes, absolutely. They even celebrate it. It's not something that happened before. You know Netanyahu, he went to an event where they were celebrating a terrorist bombing where they killed, uh, I think, 28 British citizens. So it was in the King David Hotel in Jerusalem. They, they put a plaque. Like, I mean, think about that. They bombed the British headquarters in Palestine. And then 50 years later, they went and put a plaque to celebrate the terrorist bombing and where, where they killed British citizens. And Netanyahu attended that. Go arrest Netanyahu and, and Benny Gantz and Ben Gavir and all these... Uh, these assholes, what are you arresting this man for? What a waste of resources. What ignorance about, about your own history. How can you call yourself British and you don't even know your own fucking history? These, it's pathetic. It's really pathetic. This man knows what he's talking about. He's absolutely correct. You know, the French resistance, uh, the, not just the French resistance, but all the resistance in Europe, it was, it, it, it didn't, make time there was no time uh to start you know wondering about oh well is it moral to accidentally kill civil no dude there's fucking nazis in the city there's a bunch of officers in a cafe you throw a grenade in end of story the country's occupied how you can't tolerate an occupation and and who who ran all these resistance movements it was london it was the british government that coordinated all the resistance movements in europe at least most of them so, again, it's not like there's any contradiction here. There's very, very clear. Uh, and what, what Palestinians and Syrians and Lebanese are facing is, is just as bad. 
it's it's the same kind of Nazi occupation. You had German Nazis before, and now you have uh, Israeli or Jewish Nazis. Right? I don't care what they call themselves. They're 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 not from fucking uh, Syria or Palestine or the Middle East. They belong back in Ukraine, Poland, Iraq, Morocco. I don't care. Go back to your country. You know, there's a difference between being an immigrant and being a thief, a colonizer who steals and kills. Big difference. And these people are no immigrants. They are thieves and colonizers. They are, they're just squatters. They're violent armed squatters. People who, you know, go and occupy buildings. You have Palestinian families who just literally left the house to go to a wedding or go to some, you know, ju just out the house. And then they come back and the house is occupied. They and they will refuse to leave. The Israelis refuse to leave. How many Palestinian families had their homes stolen like this? Literally too many to count. It's, it's the most insane shit you've ever heard of. And that's, that's, the milder, that's the milder example of it. I mean, would you, would you think any of these people, do you think these people would accept these two police would, ha you know, would, would accept to have their houses stolen or would they fight back? I'm pretty sure they'd fight back. This is, um, this is just, um, again, just a small video, one of the latest videos from the Qassam Brigades, the best combat journalism, you know, from an, from an objective, from an objective point of view, it is the, the best quality combat journalism that we have available to us, both in terms of how it was filmed, the quality it was filmed in, the angles, and of course the, uh, the dedication of these guys that are running around, they don't even have press vests. This is just one clip, it's not, it's not much, but I will show it to you. So this is an apartment where the Israelis, the colonizer thieves, have barricaded themselves in. Okay, and you, you can see from the pressure, look at look at the, the other windows going out that they're they're all gone, right? They're all gone. <laughs> One, one of you was saying Moshe was washing the dishes when he was flying. Look, I mean, there's nothing... I, I don't want to laugh at, uh, uh, at it. It's, it's actually really sad that it's come to this. But when, when you invade people's houses, you don't leave them much choice. You, you really don't leave them much choice. Uh, it's not like the Palestinians have been occupied for one year uh, for, or one month. Man, 75 years. Who, who could tolerate this crap? I, I, I mean, I wouldn't tolerate it. You wouldn't tolerate it. No one would tolerate this because it's not normal. Uh, and, uh, you know, this, this, the Oslo Accords, they were, it was, they were just hoodwinking the Palestinians. The Oslo Accords were one of the largest scams in history. Really, I mean, literally a scam. Not just in, in the sense that they, they lied to the Palestinians. It was literally a scam to steal. To, to steal land, to appropriate land, to annex land, you know? Look, the Palestinians signed it, did they not? What did they get? More violence from these terrorists, these Israeli colonizers, these thieves. We can't, we can't accept this. It, it, it's a violation uh, morally, but also against, it's against international law. It's against the Geneva Convention. It's against the UN Charter. You cannot tolerate occupation. Occupation is no place in the world. It's uncivilized. It's illegal. It's fascist. I mean, I, how many ways do I have to spell it out? You know, we're, it's, it's not a debate, but I'm just, I'm setting the record straight. Occupation is terrorism. That, that's, that's how I see it, and that's how most of the world see it. Occupation is terrorism. The French, 
occupation in Algeria, the illegal annexation of Algeria, was terrorism. And this, the Israelis are doing the same thing right now. It's just, you know, just like the Nazis did to, uh, to many European countries for their Lebensraum. Same thing. There's no difference. This is a story here I want to show you. The Americans are still sending the Israelis weapons. I mean, yeah, big news flash, <laughs> literally. But uh, you remember Biden about a week ago, two weeks ago, he, he had this cheap propaganda film where he, uh, you know, he was caught supposedly on a hot mic speaking to Blinken and Buttigieg. And he said that uh, Netanyahu, uh, you know, he, he had a come to, come to Jesus moment with Netanyahu. Once again, you know, Biden pretending to be a, some Irish Catholic. I mean, yeah, very Catholic of you, jo you know, Joe. Be Genocide Joe. He's, he's really earned that nickname. It suits him well. And I doubt there's mu very much Catholic about it or Christian about it. But this is what the United States is doing. They have sent, um, uh, they have, they have sent a new shipment of weapons right? Essentially, essentially green lighting the Rafah invasion. You remember the Americans and, and, and uh, again, this is Blinken and Biden specifically saying, oh, well, they, they support Israel's right to self-defense, <laughs> meaning genocide, but they don't want to go into Rafah. So they've squeezed the tube of toothpaste all the way to the end. And they're saying, well, we don't want you to squeeze it anymore. You know, you, you've already pushed everybody down. Don't squeeze it anymore. This is a, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a giant, it's a giant joke. They absolutely, they have absolutely okayed the Rafah invasion. They, they, they've done this weeks ago, right? And now the weapons shipment is clear. I mean, it's a clear green light. Not only that, but you could interpret it, you could interpret it as the Americans green lighting more action against Lebanon. Although the, the payloads are different and the Israelis can barely deal, deal with Hamas right now. They, they do not have the uh, capacity to deal with Hezbollah. Never mind Hezbollah at the same time. No, it's not happening. Look at their performance on, uh, you know, in the northern front. Pathetic. What have they got to show for it? So, let's look at what they've done. Okay? So, the Washington Post citing Pentagon and State Department officials revealed the new military package consists of 1,800 2,000 pound bombs, 500 uh, Mark 82s, which are 500 pound bombs, and 25 F-35 fighter jets. Now the 2,000 pound bombs, um, the former are essentially, you know, blockbusters. When I say blockbusters, I literally mean they can level a block. Uh, it, and Israel has been using them left and right. I mean, li like, you know, like it's nothing. Like it's nothing. Now, the biggest, I mean, I'm joking here, but the biggest uh, affront in, <laughs> in all of this is the imperial system, <laughs> pun intended. But seriously, I, 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 know, I, I, I don't know the equivalent of it in kilos, but I know what the 2,000 pound bombs do, and they, they are the most destructive uh, of the payloads and ordnance that are deployed by the, um, by the Air Force. And so the Israelis, being the cowards that they are, they only use uh, planes because they cannot fight on land. And so they have, they have sort of turned into what you could call an aerial power, if you will. But it's not really a power. They're not really fighting military installations. It's just bombing civilians. There's no skill or effort involved in it. It's a video game to these people. You know, it's a psychotic video game. And so the Americans, again, I'm not, pre you know, I'm preaching to the choir. You're, you all know this. They're just facilitating and enabling a continuation of this genocide. It's, it's, no, it's nothing big. I, I still nevertheless wanted to tell you that nothing has changed, okay? All this talk that Blinken had in Vienna and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Biden with his, his cheap propaganda, it, it is, as I, as I told you at the time, baseless and, and nothing but rhetoric. Behind the scenes, they absolutely, they absolutely want to push the Palestinians into Egypt. They want to s scatter them around the globe as if they haven't done that enough and take the land in Gaza. Again, you remember the analysis videos I did about how they want to build a canal through Gaza. They want to take Gaza's gas. Watch those videos. They'll be, they'll be at the end um, and up there. I guess this is where they point. And in the description, of course. This is 
this is something I wanted to show you. Another thing is uh, just sort of a laugh because you remember a few months ago, I I uh, covered. Um, okay, so so let me let me show you the 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 headline. This is from October nineteenth. So bear in mind, it's quite old, but it hasn't changed. This hasn't changed. The United States to send Israel artillery shells initially destined for Ukraine. Now, no one is talking about Ukraine anymore. But at the time, when I did, uh, I reported, you know, extensively on, I reported extensively on Russia's war industry, how Russia has collected more 155 millimeter shells. They've been mass producing them and stockpiling them for literally decades. They went and got them from the North Koreans as well. And, the, and you had these clowns in the New York Times who don't know their ass from their elbow laughing, saying, ha ha, they have to resort to Kim Jong-un. Ha ha ha, look, they have to resort to Iran. Look how, look how stupid they are. They can't produce any more drones. And then what happened? What won the war for the Russians? Oh, the 155 millimeter shells that they got from North Korea and that they've been stockpiling for bloody decades and the drones that they got from Iran. In your fucking face, <laughs> you you stupid clowns! Again, it's this imperialist arrogance. They think like, well, the, the Western bombs are the best, dude. One five five shell doesn't give a shit who produced it. It's a one five five shell. It's gonna rip you to shreds. And guess what? The Americans can't produce enough. So not only have they shorted Ukraine, they're they're shorting the Israelis now as well. Don't don't get me wrong. They'll still continue the genocide. They have plenty of bombs to 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 do that with. But these particular shells, if, if Israel is not receiving enough of them from the Americans, just imagine how screwed the Ukrainians are. <laughs> I mean, the, the Russians have launched a new assault now. They're, they're just solidifying what they've already taken, man. You're not getting... Th that land is gone. It would have been so much better for the Ukrainians to modify their constitution, refuse to join NATO, there would have been no war, and they would have still control of their, you know, eastern uh, regions, and they just treat the, treat the ethnic Russians with respect. But no. In any case, going back to the main topic with the 155 shells, um, what Biden is doing, he's basically uh, bypassing Congress, which, you know, um, I have to be clear. Let's say that Biden did go through Congress, and it, w it would still work because they're all war criminals. What difference does it make? Americans have this deluded, uh, you know, uh, idea that they, they are more democratic than other people and, and they live in a democracy and, oh, well, he has to go through Congress. Fuck your Congress. What has your Congress done except murder people? It's a piece of shit. It doesn't work because everyone in there works for corporations. Sorry, I, ha I had to say it frankly. Uh, I had to be <laughs> honest with you. I'm not going to hoodwink you. I, I, had to say, I had to say it like it has to be said. Um, but just, just to show you, for the second time this month, not, not even during this war, this month, Biden is bypassing Congress to approve an emergency weapons sale to Israel as Israel continues to prosecute its war against Hamas. There, there, is, uh, there is no war against Hamas, you, you liars, you scoundrel pieces of crap. And again, this is the Associated Press, right? They think that they're, they're some fancy news organization. Who writes this? Who, who, what serious human being, uh, never mind journalist, would write something like this? War against Hamas. Do you live on another planet? Is there something wrong with your fucking eyes? What, what war against Hamas? To hell with you and your goddamn uh, newspaper. Anyway. The State Department said Friday that Blinken had told Congress that he had made a second emergency determination covering $145 million, right? That was the sale for the equipment, including fuses, charges, and primers that are needed to make the 155 millimeter shells that Israel has already purchased to make them function. <laughs> so just to be clear, the Israelis, they, they don't even, the Americans are not even delivering the complete shells, the 155 shells, right? The, these things that won Russia the war. Remember, it's also the defenses. I, I did tons of videos on this, right? Please go watch them if you want to learn technically. And I, I made it interesting, of course, but just look, look, at, look at this. The Israelis don't even have the shells delivered to them completely. They need... 
they, they're sending him the fuses, charges, and primers so they can make the shells they already purchased function. Now, look, there's nothing. I mean, there's nothing abnormal about this necessarily. It's it, it's it, it happens that you have equipment delivered in parts, not just in weapon sales, but anything, right? The the point is though that the Americans cannot even deliver enough complete manufactured shells to the Israelis, uh, and and you know, n never mind a large enough quantity uh, for them to be whole. They're having to deliver them in chunks, and this is the routine delivery now. So I'm just trying to underscore this because I want to show you that the Americans are not prepared for a war against the resistance. They are committing a genocide, which they're succeeding in, but when it comes to battlefield, you know, like an actual confrontation with an armed militia or guerrilla fighting force, they're losing. And they're losing on multiple fronts. And can you imagine what, I mean, the slaughter if uh, they tried to go up against Russia or China now? Man, Russia and China are not stupid. They have everything and even better and, and in larger quantity. Right? The, the hypersonic missiles is just one thing. But look at the, the Iranians, for example, as well. How they gave the Houthis the anti-ship ballistic missiles. Caught the Americans by surprise. They don't know what to do. They, they, they don't know how to navigate around it. If they did, <laughs> they would be making progress. Is Yemen's blockade still in effect? You're damn right it is. And I'll remind you, the Yemenis are the only ones in the world who actually dare to attack American ships. Except, I mean, apart from the Israelis. <laughs> but the Israelis, the Israelis, uh, well, the, I'm talking about the USS Liberty, right? I find this funny, though, here about this $147.5 million sales as if the money comes from anywhere else. I mean, it's, it's like it's laundered between the U.S. And, and Israel. They just launder the money, right? You have, uh, for example, um, the, the Israelis getting things for free, or you have, uh, you have the American politicians who give Israel $3.8 billion, and then what happens is Israel will pay them a kickback, right? So the 3.8 billion that goes to Israel, actually a chunk of it is not for weapons. It's to go back. It goes back as a donation to the politicians, the American politicians and their democratic system and Congress that, that Biden shouldn't bypass, right? The famous Congress. Oh, American democracy. Yes. Hoo-ha. <laughs> One of you in the comments is saying that that Liberty low blow. I know it was funny. I know it was funny. I, I, but I had to say it. So... Um, this is, uh, this is kind of a sad story, I mean, for Ukraine in the end, because the Ukrainians, they really got screwed by the Americans, but they should have learned their lesson. They should have looked at what the, uh, Iraqi, you know, what happened to Saddam Hussein. He also thought the Americans were his friends, and then they stabbed him in the back when he stopped doing what they told him to do. Um, and then the great nation of Iraq was ruined, and he, he killed Iranians for eight years, of course, in the war, the Americans supplied uh, and the Europeans supplied uh, him weapons in. And, um, you know, L Libya, Gaddafi gave money to Sarkozy and then Sarkozy stabbed him in the back. No, I mean, it, it, never, ever trust the West. Never, ever. Uh, these 155 shells are the most wanted item in the world. I'm I, really, I'm saying this to you directly. The 155 millimeter shell is used widely by almost every army. And it is so badly wanted right now. And in great, in such demand, in such great demand. I'm trying to construct like three sentences at the same time. <laughs> it is in such high demand by the Americans, the Israelis and Ukrainians that it's comical. Because you, you want to run around like an imperialist swine attacking countries and you you're running out of weapons to do it and that is comical um the fa the palestinian resistance they can fashion a weapon out of a pipe that israel used to steal their resources with <laughs> you know they they're not screwing around um and so you see once again the uh the tragedy of western imperialism where uh they don't have enough shells to sign oh no you see the shells that they, they go here and sign their war crimes onto? Down, you, I don't know if you can see the signatures down there. 
The poor Israeli war criminals won't have enough shells to sign. Oh no. The tanks, the howitzers, won't have enough shells to fire. Oh no. <laughs> This is, this is always a victory for the resistance when there's, you know, short supply of weaponry. And also, I'll remind you one last thing. Um, the, when, the, when the war in, in Gaza flared up now, I was actually happy that we don't have to hear about Ukraine every day. And then I just realized I, the next second that, oh, actually we do because... Guess where most Israeli settlers come from? Guess where all the Israeli pr prime ministers and founders come from? Yeah, they come from Ukraine and Poland and yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, Bella Weissy says... Thank you, Richard. You're a real humanist. I, I, uh, I mean, I hope so. We don't want to turn into those reptiles. Do we? <laughs> Thank you. Mahat says, stolen land back now. Exactly. Exactly. Hand it over. They better hand it over, all of them. We've got a donation on PayPal. This is from Daniel, who says, support Richard for his great work. Thank you, Daniel. And I, uh, if I may say so, I highly encourage everyone to follow suit and take your advice, uh, uh, advice quickly, as fast as possible. Uh, thank you, Amar, for the donation uh, on PayPal. I'm most grateful. And uh, give me one second. I've seemed to, I, I seem to have misplaced one uh, very briefly. We have another here. This is uh, on PayPal from Amy. It says, thank you uh, for your valuable work as well as your fiery conviction for representing and spreading the truth. Do you know anything about what is happening to the orphan survivors? They are calling WCNSF, right? The wounded child, no surviving family. Who is caring for them? Where are they going? Any official charity specific to them? Also, when you get a moment, uh, please watch the documentary Earth's Greatest Enemy. Very relevant to your work. Thank you again. I certainly will. And um, I don't have any information because the 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 what I was explaining the other day in the Arabic society, even if the child loses the parents, the uncles and aunts or the closest relatives, the cousins, whatever, the siblings will take care of the child. Uh, but because Israel are massacring multiple generations of the same family in one fell swoop, or you know throughout the war, um in this genocide it, it's it's resulting in what you what you just uh use this acronym that the doctors in gaza use wounded child no surviving family it, it's really bewildering in this case i think the neighbors will take care you know the the family uh neighbors that that the child might have been well acquainted with will probably take care of them just i'm, I'm just saying because of how arabic society functions there because you know it, it's it's normal to be well acquainted or, uh, or, or friends and get along well with with your neighbors, you know, love thy neighbors. So I'm assuming it will be people in the neighborhood if if the child or the doctors can even find them. Uh, but given how how you know systematic and systemic the genocide is, I mean, it's 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 really like a tube of toothpaste. That, that's what I likened it to. How they're killing and shoving everybody um into into Rafah now 1.5 million it's disgusting it's disgusting i've 15,000 children they've killed now i mean what the fuck you know the israelis do this on purpose because they know that when when you go and and you know you kill someone's parents they're going to join the resistance it's the normal thing to do um and they 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 want to make sure that there are no people left no children left to fight back and and get Gaza back, but they're mistaken. This is not going to work. They, you know, they they don't understand. Uh, they they. It's not they don't understand. They can't accept. They just refuse to accept the reality that the U.S. is on the decline. And since they are hinged, um, you know, they, they they are they are attached to the hip with the U.S. They're going down with them, and you can see both of them falling into the abyss right now uh, in this so you know this so-called war against Hamas this genocide right they screwed up because they underestimated the public support that people would 
offer and uh, and have for Palestine, and they underestimated the resistance on on many fronts, literally on multiple fronts in the north, in the south. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, did the do you think the Israelis and the Americans actually thought that Yemen is going to blockade them? No. Do you think that they, they thought Hezbollah is going to displace hundreds of thousands of Israeli settlers and, and wreak havoc on their eyes and ears in the north? No. Did you, I mean, did, do you think that the Americans and Israelis expected Syria to join in and Iraq to join in and Iraq to be able to strike in the Red Sea? They had no fucking clue what was going to happen. They thought they, they're going to go in and, you know, it's going to be a, another, a, a, as they call it, uh, you know, another episode of... of, of um, mowing the, the grass, meaning killing the children. Well, they were highly, highly mistaken. Thank you, Jennifer, also for your donation. I'm most grateful to all of you. And um, again, I, I ask you kindly to please donate if you can. Uh, send me a comment or question as well uh, if you want, because they demonetized the channel. One of you is actually telling me in the comments now that the super chat is turned off. Uh, no, it's not. I mean, you're right. It is turned off, but I didn't turn it off. YouTube did because they, the, you know, the, they're not happy with uh, all this truth telling, right? Too much bad stuff. Too much bad press about the Israelis and Americans. Can't have that. So they they demonetize the channel. Again, I I I implore you guys to please help out because YouTube was my main source of income. How I made my living. And they took that away and I have to make up for it every month. So if you're able to donate on Patreon, I would be much obliged. If you can donate on, on uh, PayPal or Rumble, thank you. I would really appreciate it. It would mean uh, a lot to me. And please make sure you share the videos if you can't, because sharing the videos, educating people. I'm serious. It's really that bad, the situation on the ground. Please, you know, send it to your family. Send the videos to your friends. Uh, post them on Facebook. Post them on Twitter. Put it in people's faces because they, the Israelis do not have the permission. They don't get to do this. They don't get to behave like this and get away with that. It's not happening. All right. These uh, governments, our governments don't have the right to behave like this. You know, I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm really ashamed uh, to be British. I mean, it, it's so scandalous watching David Cameron, this piece of shit, and, and Rishi Sunak, who no one elected. Remember that no one elected this man. He's, he's, uh, uh, you know, some, he, he's some random, you know, moron, uh, someone no one has ever heard of that was elected by a tiny percentage of the people in his party. He wasn't actually elected in a general election. Uh, and, and, you know, even if he was, I, I don't give a crap. It's his behavior that's the problem. So, you know, you, ha you have to share the videos. You have to educate people. That's the only way. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for supporting my work and supporting independent journalism. I'm much obliged. And thank you, Catherine, who says support independent journalism. There you go. Amen. And um, I'll, I'll leave it at that, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, please share the videos, share the live stream itself. Uh, and uh, that's really one of the most uh, strongest forms of support. And long live the resistance, right? Thanks very much, guys. Happy Easter. Take care, ma salame, bye bye. A is for all men and women created by go, you know the you know the thing. B is for I'm beginning to see why your wife left you. C is for Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. D is for... Don't worry, I, I, I'm so serious. Children, I love to hear them. E is for... An excuse to walk by the dealer and say, no, I, I'm not going to be a mule. I, I, I'm gonna, I, I, I got something to do. I got to go do boom, boom, boom. F is for... A friend, time friend, and she's a friend. She's been my friend in and out of public life. Is G is for... Go to Joe 30330. H is for hairy legs that turn that 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 turn uh, um, blonde in the sun, and the kids used to come up and reach in the pool 
and rub my leg down. I is for I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. J is for Just look at the record. I have President Biden, Vice President Biden. Well, I tell you what, if you look at my record and you still doubt about my commitment, then you should vote for somebody else. K is for I've got kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. L is for a lion dog face pony soldier. M is for make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. The, the, the phone, make sure the kids hear work. N is for uh, um, NATO. O is for the only African American woman that's ever been elected to the United States Senate. P is for poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. R is for rest your soul and uh, um, although she's wait your mom's still your mom's still alive is s is for send a text to the word united t is for truth over facts u is for union workers the uaw took incredible cuts in their future v is for all right thanks so much w is for why, 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 you're getting nervous, man. Calm down. It's okay. X is for Xi Jinping. Y is for And you ain't black. Z is for you sleeping? By the way, this is my little sister, Valerie, and I'm Jill's husband. Oh, no, this is the, oh, you switched on me. This is my wife. This is my sister. They switched on me. Freedom!